What's up, Level Uppers? Welcome to It Only Does PlayStation Episode 4. This is the Level Up Network's dedicated PlayStation podcast. I am one of your co-hosts, Andrew Midori. I'm alongside... What's that thing's name again? From, Slimer. Slimer from Ghostbusters, <laughs> a.k.a. Mike McLaughlin, a.k.a. the classy douchebag. We also got the Beast from the East, Dean Marchese, down below me. Right there. Hi. Hi. Oh, so cool. You did, like, the Brady Bunch thing. He's like, he's right behind me. Hi. And then over there, we got... Gregory Verga, aka G VZ. Um, I'm not gonna say I'm the only one that doesn't breathe until Drew talks and introduces me, but like I try to hold my breath the whole time. It's very difficult. Hi! Hi! How you doing? Um, I found an anchor on my armpit, so I'm doing pretty fucking fantastic. You went really, really nuts about that. Let me refresh Dude, the you're comments going here. Crazy. Uh, my elbow speeds are eleven point sixty. Well, that is good. totally fine. That should be n- Plenty high enough for you to have good quality video right now. Gotta stay high. Uh, We'll figure this out in the next month, Dean. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Until the next episode, or until Level Up Hangout at the end of the month. We need to figure that shit out. Until next episode. Uh, so yeah, you guys, if you don't know, it only does PlayStation is on once a month. It's on the second Wednesday of each month. And it's all about uh, PlayStation, of course, but we're going to do four dedicated topics that we chose. And then, of course, you guys have submitted PlayStation dedicated questions on our Twitter at the Level Up Network, level spelled LVL. You can use hashtag IUDP if you want to be next month's uh, question for IUDP. So we appreciate uh, two questions tonight from Mel from Strife Girl. She uh, stepped it up tonight. It's so. because she's Jeez. from the Honduras. I, 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 I was just I playing uh, I was just playing games on my PlayStation system. So this is perfect. Wow. That's happy to be here. Really happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> what a story. What a <laughs> story. You. That's a good stuff right there. What were you playing, Dean? Uh, I was playing Transformers Devastation. Robots in disguise. And, and my feelings on that game are that of Devastation. A broken relationship with a hot girl. <laughs> Explain. Elaborate. It looks really good. Oh, this sounds enticing. It looks it looks really good. It's all pretty. Sounds great. Uh, but then, but like, it, you can't have a conversation with her. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. The map, the level design is like is like horrid. You can't find your objectives. The combat's really good. The moment to moment gameplay is really good. Um, so it's like it's when you're really about repetitive. To have sex, it's a platinum but, like, game. You don't know what's gonna happen. No, okay. it's a platinum game. So it's like just like punch, 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 drive, punch, 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 drive. Uh, it's pretty. It had a lot of potential, but uh, this is the this is the shell sa- the cell shaded one. Yes, correct? yes, okay. the generation one. It looks pretty. Also known as shell shaded. <laughs> I love that. Shell sated. It's hyphenated, right? <laughs> Zerda <laughs> Nervous. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Uh, Mike, you've been playing any PlayStation games this week? Uh, PlayStation centric. I tried. Well, I talked about this the other day. I played uh, Gauntlet, which was the uh, PS game of the month, PS Plus game of the month, and it was oh, yeah, uh, didn't hold up. Hold up so no, well. No, right? it's not. It's, it's a little lacking. It's just. I mean. Back in the day, it was great, and yeah. I really liked the idea of it. But there's some like Diablo does it better. So many other games have done it better. Like it was great for its time. It's kind of like GoldenEye. You know, it just doesn't hold up. And even if you remake it, it's not going to be the same. So yeah. But other than that, I've been playing Fallout, and I played. Actually, no, I played Rocket League last night for my stream. Uh, I did. I saw that. Is that, yeah. an, is that an indie game? Fallout. What is that? <laughs> what is Greg? Indie, indie title. Greg. Greg. <laughs> Greg. Wow. Fallout's definitely not an indie title. You're way oh, off there. Fallout, um, Fallout, this is like a sequel, right? So the, la- the last one was in Vegas or something? Yeah, it's a random game. I was looking at that the other night. And our PlayStation-centric guy down here, who loves PlayStation more than anything in the world, doesn't know what Fallout is. Do you, <laughs> do you love PlayStation more than anything in the world? Um, it's pretty high up there. If I had to rank stuff, it would be like... Um, Hmm. Okay, wait. <laughs> if I had to rank them, it'd probably be like my grandma, my dog. Really? Um, the leftovers. That's pretty high up. Um, wait, it's too much. We're I'll just on. Hi- we're just on a high right now from the I leftovers. Okay, that's Greg, all it is. Greg, I was just curious. Where does Kristen and the baby and Drew fall into that? That's why I had to rethink it because I think I would put them even above my grandma. Is that bad? A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> nah, grandmas are boring, bro. Yeah, Lillian doesn't even know. <laughs> Lillian doesn't know. Uh, Greg, what PlayStation-centric <laughs> games have you been playing this week? The Uncharted 4 Thieves and Beta! All right, it's get it out of the way. Right. Actually, oh. you know what? No, don't get it out of the way because okay. Talk about that. we're talking about Uncharted later on in the show. So I feel yes, like we, we can wait until then. I think we just get into it. As we were saying, this is for PlayStation-dedicated topics. I'm the first one of the night, so uh, let's get going. 
Let's get going with Drew's topic. Only does PlayStation. First up, uh, it's almost the end of the year. The almost the end of 2015. Another it's year the, over. That uh, really snuck up. Huh? It, it did. It went quick, right? And uh, Christmas is in two weeks. That's crazy. Dude, <laughs> yo, no, crazier than that. Star Wars is in one week. Let's just get that out of the way. Right. Ooh. It's crazy. Uh, so I figured now is the appropriate time to do a PlayStation year in review. Give our final grade for PlayStation this year, the highs, the lows. So what I did here is I compiled a few things. First up, the top the top PS4 games, according to Metacritic. Uh, this does not mean PlayStation exclusives. Uh, okay. MGS5, number one, with a 93. Then you got Journey with a 92. Bloodborne with a 92. The Witcher 3, 91. Shovel Knight, a 90. Bastion, 89. Aww. You've got... Uh, Divinity Original Sin Enhanced, which I actually don't even know what that is, but that has an 89. Then you got the Talos Principle with an 88, Batman Arkham Knight with an 87, and, Fall and Fallout 4 with an 87. That indie game made it to the top? Wow. And let me uh, let me sum up some of the bigger exclusives of the year. Uncharted and Nathan Drake Collection was the highest rated PlayStation exclusive behind, besides Bloodborne, which we mentioned earlier. That had an 87. Then you got Terraway Unfolded with an 81. Helldivers with an 81. God of War 3 Remastered 81. Grim Fandango Remastered an 80. And Tool Dawn got a 78. Everybody's Gone to the Rapture also a 78. And then The Order 1886 down there with a 63. I would put mm. Until Dawn and Everybody's Gone to the Rapture higher than that in my personal year in review, just because I loved both of those games. Did anybody else play Everybody's gone to the rapture, or was I the only one? To I want it? to. I haven't gotten around to it yet, but I oh, do agree. Dude. Until Dawn is an 85 for me, for sure. I feel like, like that game's very charming. Yeah, Until Dawn is easily an 85. Yeah, um, I, that I, game I'm was surprised. Awesome. Yeah. That's, really that's one of my contenders, actually, for Game of the Year. I haven't played that much this year, and I know Life is Strange is going to beat it out. Ooh. I know Arkham Knight's going to beat it out in the end. That's still my number one. But yeah, Until Dawn, I think that was, that was so special to me because it was a surprise. I don't think anybody yeah. truly expected Until Dawn to actually be a good game, and it, it really was. It was a good game. Yeah. It told a good story, and it was... Uh, Unlike most things you get nowadays, you don't get yeah. a lot of horror games like that. B movie slasher like, movie like games. And the production like, like quality the alone was amazing. The Order 1886. Let's get that out of the way right now. That I would say that's one of the lows of the of the year. Not because I think it's so terrible a game, but it definitely was the lowest rated PlayStation exclusive of the year. It had enormous hype behind it and just did not live up to that hype in, in almost any way. Uh, so I do think that's probably one of the lowest points for Sony this year. Let's go around. Uh, Dean, you first. What, what do you think is the lowest point for Sony? Is it the Order 1886? And if so, forget that and tell me another low point for you. We're talking about exclusives, right? We're just, I'm just talking about anything. It doesn't have to be okay. necessarily it can games. Be third party. It could be anything PlayStation related, like maybe mm -hmm. a decision Sony made, mm -hmm. it, anything. What do you think was like one of the low points of the year for Sony? Well, I'll tell you what, Andrew, I sure wish you didn't start <laughs> with me. Uh, <laughs> but, I mean, it's hard not to mention the order because that was supposed to be so huge. Right. And yeah. it just it's supposed to just, take place in 1886. So yeah, it actually did. It but did do that. at the same time, oh. it might be the closest we'll ever get to Batman Gotham by Gaslight. Hey, I don't know about that. Say never. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> I got some feelings about that Telltale game there. Yeah. Right. Um. I don't know. You know, over over just this past year, I feel like I wasn't ever really that bummed out on PlayStation. Honestly, I feel like it, there were way more positives to take away than there were negatives. Uh, I think some of their updates to their firmware could have been utilized a little bit better. But overall, there wasn't anything aside from the order that I'm like, oh, man, like I wish this didn't happen, you know? <laughs> How about Uncharted's on the screen right now? We did get the Nathan Drake collection, which is great. It reviewed really well, 87. But that was maybe one of the impetuses behind Uncharted uh, A Thief's End being delayed until next year. If you guys remember, Uncharted 4 A Thief's End was supposed to come out this year. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd say that's one of the big disappointments. Not because I have a problem with it. You know, it's uh, I'm okay with them taking the time they need. But still, this was a kind of a little bit of a lacking year when it comes to PlayStation exclusives. And I think Uncharted was really kind of needed to, to end off, to, to cap this year. What's weird yeah. is that they missed a big opportunity with going up against Tomb Raider. You know, the biggest the biggest slight that Sony, you know, anybody, Sony core and then Sony fans, you know, had was, oh, well, Xbox gets this for exclusive for a year. You know, it was a Tomb Raider game. Why would you not want to put out, you know, the biggest competition that it has? And mainly the main reason why it's as – I'm going to go venture to say that it's mainly the main reason why Tomb Raider is as big as it is again. Uh, is that And that's Uncharted. 
So why would you not want to put it up against that? So I'm kind of happy that that happened, though, only because I want, even though I'm still pissed that um, we're not getting Rise of the Tomb Raider this, like, for PlayStation. I mean, yeah. I could have gotten it, but why am I going to get an Xbox? Am I right? PlayStation! But <laughs> I will say... <laughs> um, that I'm stoked because it's going to be coming out next year in the fall. So we'll still get Uncharted at the beginning of the year, and then we'll have like an Uncharted-like experience in Rise of the Tomb Raider on PlayStation, at least for me personally. That's what I'll be doing next year is picking that up. Um, as far as that being a disappointment, I'm happy it got delayed, um, especially with all the grief and the stories that happened this year. My biggest disappointment was probably um, Amy Hegg being taken off the project just because, for me, I wanted her to see that franchise through to the end. Um, so that's kind of sad for me. Um, yeah. But I still think her influence is still there in the series. I hope it is. We haven't had a chance to play the game. The only thing that's worrying me about it is that the multiplayer is so drastically changed and influenced by The Last of Us. I'm just hoping that the main story is Did you not like the multiplayer in The Last of Us? I loved the multiplayer in The Last of Us. So what's the for, problem then? Because for Uncharted, yeah, Greg. they don't mix. Um, okay. So for The Last of Us multiplayer, yeah. it's very slow-paced. It's very team-oriented. Um, and they tried to take those features and implement them into an Uncharted, and Uncharted is very much so. It's supposed to be cartoony, it's supposed to be campy, and they have that in the boosters and stuff, but they started doing, The Last of Us did like these things called paid in-game boosters, mm -hmm. so during the match, you earn a certain amount of money for every person you kill, and then using that money during the, the game itself, in the 20-minute match, you can buy like upgrades <laughs> to your guns, you can buy perks, you can buy now these companions and stuff. Um, but the it sounds like the ESRB's worst nightmare. You earn money for all the kills that you make. Yeah, basically, it's like here. <laughs> um, and it's it's like bad only because when you're it's it's such a fast paced multiplayer that to put like downs in it now with revives and stuff it just doesn't work it's not as fluid like in the last of us you're crawling around basically for the whole 20 minute match sure. like you're basically crouched down the whole time and for uncharted you want to be running you want to be uh jumping around and especially they added the grappling hook and multiplayer and that is my favorite thing in the world to grapple hook and punch somebody off of it it's a one hit instant kill that's my favorite thing in the world but other than that uh they're kind of screwed up the multiplayer so i'm hoping they fix it when the game comes out but uh okay well we're supposed to be like playstation happy and all that so so maybe we should talk about the high points of, yes. of this year for PlayStation. Uh, I think that third party w was great in general. And I thought Sony did a great job of grabbing some of those third party deals. Mm -hmm. Battlefront uh, being one of them. Um, Call of Duty, oh, of course, being one of them. Batman was closely yeah. associated with And that's my game of the year right now. And that, yeah, very much closely associated with PlayStation. Destiny it had a still. PlayStation bundle and a PlayStation limited edition console, which I think so. I love that. I love limited edition consoles. I, I can't stand when there's bundles and it's just the game thrown in with there. It's like, no, do something special. Like, they had change, a lot of those this year, Change too. up the console. You got the... Yeah, exactly. You had a Metal Gear Solid. You had Call of Duty. You had Battlefront. You had Arkham Knight. Like, these all had limited edition consoles. I like that kind of stuff. I do like... Some of the updates in the firmware, I think that the communities feature specifically is really, really cool. Yeah. Uh, I think that you're right, though, Dean, that there is definitely some lacking things there as well. We didn't get name changes for one. That's that's one of the really big disappointments. And they didn't quite get the friend system correct with the yeah. the favorites and the grouping. That it wasn't what we wanted. They, they like went a half step. They went a half mm -hmm. measure. Uh, so that's kind of going back to a disappointment there. Um, I don't know. I think that overall, uh, this was a fine year, but I, I still feel like they're holding so much back. Yeah, it's it's just it kind of blows my mind how much they're holding back. Uh, I wanted certain games to come out this year that never did, and haven't even been talked about. Rhyme, I thought was going to be this year. I thought yeah. Rhyme was coming out this year, and we don't even know what the hell's going on with that game. I can't wait for that game. Go ahead, Greg. The um, does anybody remember the game? I was think every time you say <laughs> Rhyme, I think about this game, and I don't remember what it's called. Um, I think it might be that game company that's doing it. It's like the underwater... Absolutely. Abzu. Yeah. yeah, what happened to that? Did yeah, we got, had some gameplay a few months back that looked gorgeous. Like, the yeah. animations, the way he, he... I guess, I don't know what it is. The way it moves through the water is yeah. beautiful. I can't wait oh, for that game. Gorgeous. There's yeah. a lot of those kind of games that I'm like, The Witness, Firewatch, yeah. although we know those Firewatch. release dates now, but <laughs> as you said, Rhyme and Abzu are nowhere to be found, and those nope. are kind of smaller games. I'm surprised they aren't trying to fill their schedule with those kind of games while we wait for the big heavy hitters like Uncharted and uh, you know No Man's Sky next year and all that kind of stuff. Mm. So 
For me personally, I feel like they totally rocked it, though, with indie titles, especially uh, the free ones that they picked up for PlayStation Plus. I know some of my highlights of the year were some of the smaller, like, two-hour games that I was able to do on Indie. Submerge being one of them. If nobody's checked that game out, that game is fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, really cool art design, really cool story that's told in a really, really uh, weird, fascinating way. Um, and now picking up games that were exclusive to Xbox, like Shadow Complex, and there was two more that I played this year that I can't think of, but... Um, I played two more that I was so stoked about that were on Xbox Live Arcade and exclusive to that and PC, and Sony grabbed them. Um, and then as far as PlayStation Plus goes, like they're still killing it with that. Um, the games that they get for it, regardless of whatever console you have, both PS4, PS3, and Vita, all great games that you can play. I think a lot of people would disagree with that, but I, really? I, I love the... Yeah, I think a lot of people are like, where is the AAA stuff? Where is the $60 oh. retail titles? That's not what the uh, beginning years of PlayStation Plus are about. The beginning years of PlayStation Plus are about promoting those diversity games. Games, the ones that you uh, wouldn't normally play unless you got them for free. And I think that that's what I love about PlayStation Plus is that these are not games that typically I would I would spend the money on and take a risk on. Some mm -hmm. of them, for sure, but a lot of them, no. Yeah. Uh, so something like Submerged, I haven't played it yet, but that's definitely not a game I would spend money on. But yeah. and I don't, th I don't think you would have either, probably. Um, Greg, I think Me, that I bought it. I bought it. It wasn't free for PlayStation Plus. You just got it. At oh, okay, never mind. You, um, you do love those kind of games. But I love those games. Those kind of games. There's certain situations where it's like oh, I'm on the fence. I'll wait. Maybe this will come to PlayStation Plus. Uh, Dean just did that very recently. I think it was with which one was it? Gauntlet. Dean? It was Gauntlet. Yeah. yeah. You were like, oh, I think this is going to be one of those PlayStation Plus titles, and you waited it out, and it worked in your favor. Uh, mm -hmm. I love when that happens. That's happened to me a few times as well. Uh, Mike, we haven't heard a lot from you yet. What is the high point of the year for you when it comes to PlayStation? Uh, Al, it, realistically, I mean, it, they've had a lot of good stuff, but there was nothing really this year that was PlayStation centric that was like wowed me. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, um, there was a lot of good third party stuff, and there was a lot of good first party stuff, but nothing first party uh, at all was like this is you know this made my year. I mean, E three, yeah, we can get that out of the way if you want to talk about. You I was know, just about just to an say, event, yeah, E three <clears throat> was amazing. Um, but then on the other side of the scale, the worst part of the year to me was PlayStation Experience. I was just about to say that. Yeah, it's kind of funny. Yeah. Those um, are kind of the highs and the lows there. Right, right. So they they did it strong. And we, we talked about this a little bit the other day on the show and everything like that. But, I mean, E3, they just murdered it. It was amazing. Um, and then PlayStation Experience, yeah, we kind of expected a lot more. And then PlayStation Experience comes. We had all this hype, you know, both from last year, you know, with how amazed we were with everything. And then also our own things that we predicted, like, oh, this is probably going to come. We haven't heard anything about this. And then all of a sudden... We have some great news for you. It's just not what you want, and then we're all disappointed. So there's some balancing, you know, balancing issues that they had this year. I think that we didn't really get to discuss PlayStation Experience that much, even on on Sunday. I feel like we could have gone even deeper on it. Um, I'm wondering, like, how do you think they respond to the like kind of negativity surrounding PlayStation Experience this year? It does seem like not overwhelmingly so. It's not like this was terrible. I still don't think it was terrible. It was just it no. was okay and it didn't live up to the expectations. Do you think Sony looks at that and they're like, okay, guys, we need to uh, kind of modify what we do with PlayStation experience, experience moving forward? Like, I, I think personally, they need to have at least one first party heavy hitter every PlayStation Experience, and they didn't have that yep. this year. I agree with that. I mean, here's the thing: I think they expected bigger work. things out of three different events. I think they expected bigger things out of the Uncharted situation, which, and, and, and not that they expected bigger things, but I think that they expected that to be able to carry the rest of it. Mm -hmm. They expected really big things out of Nino Kuni. Um, and they expected really big things out of uh, Paragon, which is just, it's such a controversial topic. I know we, we, you know it was brought up the other day that you know, we're just not the market for that and our group doesn't play those games, but realistically, there's no buzz anywhere. You know, the buzz, is, I mean, there's some, but like as far as, you know, in order to qualify it as a closer you know as the mic drop moment for the end of your conference that's not that it was not anywhere i, I think near. the problem is that the conference could have been so much better received if they just tweaked the order in a yeah. very slight way mm -hmm. i think that the, the optimal thing would have been ending with final fantasy remake right but it's Absolutely. still they had that one two punch at the beginning i understand why they did that but just putting paragon second to last and then putting nino kuni last mm -hmm. that would have been enough oh, to really turn things around where it's like oh paragon like an unreal uh, unreal engine uh you know epic games exclusive to playstation with a move it's like that's pretty cool and then yeah, the yeah. one two punch with nino kuni after that closing the show that might have completely changed the tides like turn the tides on that one and i honestly though i think the perfect thing would have been nino kuni coming right after uncharted paragon second to last final fantasy remake last mm -hmm. then it, that would have I, I think everybody would have been a much way. That yeah made it and, and you're right. I mean, it's all logistical at that point. But at the same time, we also, yeah. I mean, 
or with Shu. Yeah, that was talked up. We already brought up where are the games that we've been trying to figure out with, with you know, what's going on with them. And a lot of these games, and it, it's one of those things where I feel like asking to know all these updates and everything like that kind of sounds a little needy. You know, we're, we are the gamers, you know, and it, it's a whole industry that everybody's, you know, into now. And it's kind of way bigger than it ever used to be. But at the same time, when you tease games and say, oh, we have more to show you later here and we have much more news for this to come and everything like that. And then you don't deliver. And now it's six months until the next yeah. conference that you're going to show anything that kind of well, rubs we do have like, oh, we do have gdc don't forget we have gdc that's but see that's not and, and people say that but it, does that ever really produce much usually it's tech yeah. it produces playstation home and little big planet Lot of big don't forget that uh but well, I was say it's i was about to say it's, it produces tech and software yeah. usually you see software updates teased in that um so it's not usually a game set you know, i'm not gonna see sony santa monica's title at gdc that's Probably gonna not. be an e3 thing you know and that's kind of one of those things that surprised me that I, I feel like companies don't understand how valuable uh, a short little tease is sometimes and i feel like they get scared because some you know you have a lot of these gamers that you know get really burned by just seeing the title of something you know and then other people like realistically the masses i feel like really benefit from that at least we know something's coming at least we get to see something and it's like on our minds again yeah. You know, imagine if we all we saw was just like, you know, all we hear was in, you know, a voiceover, you know, 20 seconds of voiceover, and then we just see God of War, or whatever the new title is. Like, how excited that would have made that conference worthwhile if they added that right in the middle. Done. I want to end this topic real quick before moving on to the question. Final grade. If you had to give it one out of 10 to PlayStation on 2015, what would your grade be? Mike? Eight. Dean? 6.5. And Greg? I'm going to go with seven. Yeah, I'll give them a 7.5, I think. So, all right. Uh, and let's go to this question. As we were saying earlier, you guys can submit PlayStation dedicated questions on our Twitter at the Level Up Network, level spelled LVL with hashtag IUDP. This one comes from Strife Girl. Dear it only does PlayStation. Which PlayStation 2 remasters do you most hope will come to the PlayStation 4? Now that we have that, we have the uh, emulation uh, software included with the PS4 through an update. So, Dean, starting with you, what, uh, what PlayStation 2 remasters would you really like to see? Oh, well, uh, PlayStation 2, we talked about a little bit on the show. I definitely would like to see the Spider-Man movie games come back, just as a little personal nod for me. Um, and aside from those, actually, if I could if I could only pick one of the Spider-Man games, I, I got to go with the one. I brought it up a little bit, Ultimate Spider-Man. It's like a cel-shaded yes. open-world Spider-Man. That, with trophy support, mm. oh, my. I would mm. love it so much. My, oh, uh, my. Any of, the, any of the Tony Hawk games, yeah. I would be down for. Uh, I would love to see one of the. I would love to see one, if not more, of the Spyro games come back. Uh, I would love to see Spyro in general come back. Uh, sure. Those would probably be my top three. Okay, no, those are all good choices. How about you, Mike? Uh, Crash Bandicoot, because um, they had. Well, no, no, actually, I'm sorry. Crash Bandicoot, they didn't have any on PS2, right? No, they, they did, did, but not the good Wrath ones. Of Cortex, not the good a, ones, right? It was just the crappy ones. They started that was post up. Naughty Dog. Yeah, right. I think Warped was the last one. I'm, yeah, okay. Yep. Um, I, you know what? I really here's the thing. I don't really care too much. You know, just for shits and giggles, just because I think it would be funny. I would like to see uh, Kingdom Hearts two come to PS4, just so Dean can feel like, oh fuck. A little well, bit. the thing about that is, uh, I don't think it would make me feel any kind of way. I have yeah. no. a lot of those games. We kind of already got an answer to that with r true remasters. Not even just his emulation stuff, but the Kingdom Hearts. You know what is it called? 2.5 HD remix right. or, or whatever. So those, they've already taken care of a lot of the big games that people expected. It's more, it's right. more the obscure stuff now that it's like, Oh, I would like them to bring this over or that over. Um, and I, I honestly don't know what I really want from the PS2. I don't PS2. really care. Here's the thing. Everybody, and I'll, I'll be honest with you. I mean, this is a PlayStation Central comp, you know, podcast and everything. And I love the PS2, but there's nothing on there. I was like, you know what? I need to play this again. You know, yeah. those games, usually realistically, the nostalgia type games usually come, sorry to say it, from Nintendo. But, you know, Sony had clearly the best console, the best lineup for everything. But most of those games, I'm going to guarantee you, we we're thinking about them with, you know, rose cover, cover, uh, colored glasses. Yeah. You know, it's not going to be that they age very well. Oni Musha like is a good choice, I would say. Uh, Bulldog yeah, Brad, that's I a like good that. one. Oni Musha is a great choice. Uh, uh, Greg, how about you? What is a PS2 remaster that you would like to see? I'm not positive if they did it already. I think they did but uh the only one that i could think of that they already haven't done obviously my answer would have been kingdom hearts but they have that and yep. i'm still waiting that's obviously going to come to ps4 it's going to be right before three and it, they're going to release yeah. everything all together so i'm i'm that's like my dream 
uh, that I think they're going to end up doing. But um, Okami was the one I was thinking of. They already did, they... did that on PS3, I think, not PS4. They did. Okay. Um, I would like to see that game again. I enjoyed that game. Mm -hmm. uh, it was random. It was like a hole-in-the-wall game. I don't see them bringing that over to PS4 anytime soon, but that, I like that game. I like that character. Well, um, that's the thing, to your point, of, well, to your point about Kingdom Hearts and to Mike's point about why I wouldn't really care if they brought Kingdom Hearts PS4 is because, like you guys were saying, like a lot of these games are better left in your head the way you think they looked right then what they're going to look like when they come yeah. you know what i mean the the, be the benefit is trophy support for people like me and you know you get that on ps3 already so I, some things i feel like are just better left where they are i think there are yeah, a few games see. that would look really good though and uh, as landing not landing on water gravy biscuit says ps2 had a ton of rpgs final fantasy 12 and dragon quest 8 are amazing mm. looking ps2 yeah, games that would look okay. beautiful on the ps4 but then again, you, have, you have games like uh and you know it's funny as i experienced it as the re yeah you know, as a collection on um, the ps3 where i tried to and then oh. i remember it you know distinctly in my brain you know the metal gear solid series with like snake eater and everything like that well we already had got did, that yeah you know, but that, but even even then, the the collection and everything, it didn't age well at all. You know, I looked into it; it was very, it, it was rough graphically to me. You know, someone who had never been invested in the original series, and I even remember other parts of the game. You know, my friend had played, and I watched and everything. So that and exactly goes back to my point again. Now, like, so like Chris MX, uh, SSX, Hot Pursuit Two, Need for Speed Underground. You know, Dean said the Spider Man games, games like that. For some reason, I don't think would have mattered too much. Mm -hmm. He said Spyro, but there's no real good Spyro games on the PS2. Xenosaga is a good choice, though. I agree with Xenosaga. Xenosaga. Greg, though, you're, we're up with your topic, man. Go ahead. Quickly, before we get into my topic, did anybody play The Bouncer? Yes, I was going to say that, too. Yeah, The Bouncer. Um, I really oh. love that game. Yeah, it's a good game. It's really, really short. Uh, so if they were to do like a full-on remaster, like a Final Fantasy VII-style remaster, I would like them to redo that and make the story a lot longer. But that was a great game. It came yeah. as a demo for me with Devil May Cry. Really I, I like that a lot as well. That was early in PS2. But uh, yeah. now we're talking about... <laughs> Um, so Greg's topic, ladies and gentlemen, obviously we're going to bring it up because I have a lot to say about this game, but all of our Uncharted 4 predictions. So I first want to start off with how do we think this game is going to play out? What do we think the story is going to be? How do we think it ends? Okay, is it Drake's end? We talked about this in the chat a little bit. I didn't realize it the first time I watched the long cutscene with Sam mm -hmm. at PlayStation Experience, but watching it back, listening closer to the dialogue, first of all, amazing scene. Yes. Really, yes. really well done. Amazing animation. Looks gorgeous. It's but what Sam is talking about is being left for dead, being yes. left in a prison, buried alive. And that's exactly the dialogue that was used in the original teaser trailer when Amy Hennig was still attached to the project, yes. when there was a different villain. So the parallels there make me wonder did they just replace that villain with drake's brother who's now sam and does that mean that sam is going to turn into a villain at the end of this game i get bloodline vibes we mm. talked about this uh, in the chat and i'm one of, i think me and mike are the only ones that have watched bloodline yeah. but it's all about you know, that brother relationship which i obviously have a very c close connection with but it's all it's a good bad good brother bad brother and i wonder if sam is going to take revenge on drake for leaving him it doesn't seem like drake in intended to leave him it seems like drake is legitimately surprised that sam is back he thought he was dead but that that being the case still it doesn't matter he left uh, you know he left sam in a prison to die uh uh, I wonder this could that could be a really really dark turn for this game if that happens. I don't I don't want hmm, This is my problem with it is Uncharted is very predictable now. Um, it's still a great story. They still tell awesome tales. The set pieces are phenomenal, but I think as the games have gone on, and we've all said this multiple times, like the set pieces kind of control where the story goes at this point. Like I don't think they think of the story first anymore. Like Wait, I really feel you? like did you say that Uncharted is predictable now? From the yeah, first like, three minutes of the first game, I could tell you almost everything that was going to happen in that I think game. he's more talking could, about how there, there's patterns that kind of go through I mean, each Uncharted yeah, game. Yeah, and like you can the kind whole of, game has always been predictable. But oh, yeah, you, it's an Indiana you only Jones played adventure, the first like, game? I played the first and part of the second. I'm like, I think, three hours into the second one. So yeah, but there's stuff nothing, that, John Snow. There's stuff <laughs> I know enough about them. I've seen. You don't. Them. I'm telling you, there's shit you never are. Yeah. No, you do need to go through two and three because that's when they try to take some risks and do something different. And they do stuff with the side stories, especially like um, with Tenzin in two and um, in three with the whole Marlo dynamic, and especially the shock that happens at the beginning of three. Like little stuff like that, I think, are the little jolts we get from the series. But as far as like. You're moving through a crowd. Great set piece. Here's a beautiful view. And then I'm going to not be with Elena. And then there's going to be a treasure and it's going to be cursed. Like, I don't want the story to 
fall back on that, especially if this is going to be the last Naughty Dog one we get. So if I, hmm. I mean, honestly you though, I know we Samus expect the villain. Like, yeah, I know we expect sense. betrayals. I know we expect betrayals, but still, this is more than just a betrayal of like an old friend who was your treasure hunter friend when you were younger. This is family. This is blood. Like if they go so far as to have Sam try to kill Drake or something like that, that's dark. Like that's yeah. really really dark for Uncharted. Man, um, Sam is going to kill later. I think Sam's going to kill Sully. You think so? Oh, Sully's going to bite the that. fucking dust, dude. Sully Guarantee it. Oh, Sully man. Died. No, somebody Sully. does need to die. You're right. Somebody does need Sully's to die. Sully's going to die. I'm not so sure Greg's personal vendetta against him, but I do think he's going to die. I don't. I but, love Sully. I don't have a personal need... vendetta. It just pisses me off that they had an opportunity to take him out, and they didn't and they stick back fucking on it. to it. Yeah, I'm with you. it was so fucking cheap to do that because they did the same exact thing with Uncharted 2, and that's yeah. why I was so depressed. It wasn't because of the cursed treasure or like we're deteriorating from the traditional treasure hunt story it was the fact mm. that you did a fake out two times in a row and that's why i get pissed about uncharted 3 all the time yeah it's i don't like, like the i don't like the cop outs i think if you it's like that not to derail but the one episode in the flash where this big yes! cop one happens and then he reverses time and they're like never mind <laughs> yeah that's come exactly on that's the problem with though. anything that has reversing time superman right. the original superman like, like that's commit, bullshit like you gotta commit to your plot point it's, it's not bullshit when they have that as a story device but here's the, here's the thing right Uncharted 2, they fake out kill Elena, right? Oh. In Uncharted 3, they fake out kill Sully. Difference being, they never planned on killing Sully. Uncharted 2, if it was down to Neil Druckmann and Bruce Draley, Elena would have been bit in the dust. And the thing is, since Uncharted 2, Neil Druckmann and Bruce Draley are the powerhouse behind Naughty Dog. Those guys do what they want. So if they want to kill Sully in this game, they kill Sully. If they want to kill the damn baby in Elena's stomach, they're they'll kill, kill the damn Elena baby in Elena's stomach. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I feel like the at the time this they were going to kill Greg. Elena, but I don't think that I hated that. But this I don't think a red fucking wedding. everybody's just going to die. Everybody's going to die at the same time. <laughs> if, if I got to see Chloe die, I would sacrifice everybody else along with her. But um, as oh far God. as like, I don't know about that. I feel like at the time they were thinking and maybe toying around with the idea, but I don't think they would have committed to killing Elena. Like, but what um, do you think? I mean, if you trust topic, Neil Druckmann, they think did. Is going to happen? What do I think is going to happen in the story? So I think the story is going to play out itself. I think Sully's dying. Um, I'm thinking we're going to lose maybe a lot of the secondary characters. I'm thinking Drake's going to live, and I think it's going to be, especially now that they've introduced dialogue choices, I think it's going to have multiple endings, and I think you're going to either have to pick Elena or Sam, and you're going to have a scenario where both of them are about to die, and you can only save one. And that's how I think the game is going to Here, end. Here's my oh thing. Oh, my God, dude, I figured out the ending. Okay. They're going to have to make you – they're going to make you choose – you're gonna have to choose go treasure hunting with Sam mm -hmm. or stay at home with Elena and the baby. I 100% agree with that. Dialogue choice. I do think that could potentially be oh, an God. ending Wait, where is you. Elena, Elena's not confirmed as pregnant. No, no, okay, that's I don't think so. Theory. I just want to make sure. But here's the thing: is Mike's 100% right. right? For them to reveal dialogue choices at the PlayStation Experience, it immediately, in my mind, popped that question of, "Wow, this is like the choice here. Like the choice is Elena or treasure hunting." The if there isn't a choice though. I don't think that Drake just chooses not to treasure hunt anymore. If we look at that PlayStation Experience video, he's at the beginning, he's behind a desk, he's stamping things, he looks bored. Like, uh, that, that's what? not what we want from Nathan Drake. And you can automatically see what they're setting up is, like, he's he's on a rut. Like, this is not what he wants from his life. Like, he's he's settled down as this, like, family guy stamping stuff behind a table. Like, I, I know, like, I know you want him to end up with Elena, but... The, if he's going to end up with Elena, it has to be as a treasure hunter. Like they need to do, it, they need to do See, it both as a treasure hunting family, <laughs> or Drake isn't explain, happy. Hold up, my wait, real quick stuff. before you go on. Miss Mel said, "Fine, bye, bitch. I'm taking Nathan Drake treasure hunting with me." <laughs> well, she, yeah. loves, she loves me. But um, as far as my dilemma with the whole Elena thing goes, I just want to clarify my point. It's not because I hate any of the characters so drastically that I want Nate to stop treasure hunting and become this rut like in a rut guy the whole dilemma with elena is that he con constantly lies to her and and on every adventure she ends up going back with him because she loves the thrill of adventure just as much as he does mm -hmm. he just lies to her every time about it so if he took out the lying factor of it and they did go on a treasure hunt together like the only reason they would have to stop doing that is like you said if they had a baby but like they can make that work too and then stay off of it for a couple of years. Maybe Nate goes and does some cool stuff with Sully, but like have a poker night. You don't need to go find El Dorado every fucking two well, months. I don't think it'd be a poker night, but I also don't think it needs to be a treasure hunt where they're put in yeah. danger every five seconds. That's I think I mean. that there might be a balance that could be like a sweet ending where it's like, yeah. you know, they, they find something that they can do together that still has that thrill of adventure, but it's not like him. Like go to lose? 
<laughs> no, not like go to Lowe's. <laughs> Just something that's not hit behind of, a like desk. It does need to I be mean, something that puts them in danger because that's how right. we get a sequel. Right. To the game. Yeah. It has Are we to talking be that? about like hypothetical, like what Drake and Elena do in their spare time as a couple? Or, you know, after the screen yeah. of Charted ends, or are we talking about what we're going to get another game from them? Well, I just know that at the end of the day, when Drake sees like everything fall around him, like that's when he's like, "All right, fun's over. Like this isn't yeah. okay anymore." And when he comes close to losing the people that he cares about, I think that's what this game is going to put him through—the trials and the tribulations of losing the people that stick their neck out for him. Um, and all of his adventures are luck. We've all seen this. Every single thing he gets through is not planned. It's all just luck. He but just at the end, he also ends up with nothing. He never ever gets the and treasure that, at the end. It also well, escapes one him. He does, but. That's different, because Sully ended up getting Kinda. it. Kind of. Not the yeah. one he wanted. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, but at the end of the day, when it comes down to it, like I think this game is going to take out all of the side characters that we've come to love. I think it's going to definitely take out uh, Cutter, the bald British guy that turned on you in Uncharted 3. I think he's going. I think Chloe's going. I think Sully's going. I think they're going to put him through the Elena's ringer going. on this one. Elena's never dying. Um, he deserves it. Like, that's the thing is... It, and that's what I was going to say. He deserves it. He deserves it all at this point. He yeah. deserves to feel that heart for an Uncharted game. I feel like we're underplaying the, like... Pulpy actionness of, of these games, dude. I don't. Yeah, I don't know if they kill everybody, you know, guys, but everything's gonna be okay. That's kind of what they do, man. <laughs> dude, at at, the, at the same time, Uncharted, though, like, have these drastic effects. At the end of the day, these Uncharted games do end with everything is okay because that's the kind of games they are. It's Indiana Jones. It's not right. fucking like the Dark Knight. You know, I think everything ends okay in that it's it's happy and people are happy. But I think in order for him to actually legitimately give up treasure hunting, if it's not going to happen from Sully like going ninety nine percent to dying, it has to be that somebody close to him does truly yeah. die, and it might not just be one person. It might be a few people to finally put like you know drill it into his skull like you can't do this. You can't as have far as Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, you're good. Go ahead. Okay. As far as the game, uh, like, performance-wise does, how do you guys think of that all? Oh, my God. Oh, it's going to kill. So good. It's going to kill. March yeah, is a great think. time of year for this game to release, in my opinion. I think it's much better than it releasing during the holidays, actually. Um, so uh, I think it's going to do great. I think it's going to be the highest selling of all the Uncharted games, and it might come close to matching The Last of Us sales, which would be a huge accomplishment considering the install base when The Last of Us came out. So. And reviews-wise, same thing? You guys all think it'll be stellar? I, I think, think it won't review as well as Uncharted 2, but it'll yeah. review probably right around Uncharted 3. Yeah, I think right. if the I think if the story is strong enough, yeah, I mean we've seen how technically impressive it is, so I don't see why why not. I think I think if the story the story is going to be the crucial piece of this puzzle that yeah that will decide whether it's a nine or a ten. Yeah, uh, and I think if the story is as strong as as we want it to be, and there are real risks at play, and they don't just do the whole everything is alright thing, I think we we'll, we'll see some tens for sure. I'm just a little worried because the marketing the marketing so far has been really good in, in terms of pacing, but. You know, people get excited the closer they get, and they show a little too much, and they start really pushing those trailers. So if they keep at the pace it's been, and the story's great and everything, I think the hype will stay. I think it'll sell really, really well, and it'll do really well, too. Mike, yeah. how about you? I got off the train. <laughs> about, I hated that so um, much. No, I don't know enough about it. I'll be, I'll be realistic with you guys. I, don't know, I really Should don't have worry. enough to give to this conversation because I don't – give a shit about Cutter because I don't really know who he is besides I played as him in a match online in Uncharted 4 beta. Mm -hmm. and you gotta play those fucking games, man. They're so good. I do. I know. It's funny. I actually almost did it for the stream yesterday and then uh, someone streamed uh, Rocket League and I got really big urge to play it. So I might do it Sometimes too, maybe like I feel like if you don't beat Uncharted two and three by the next, it only does PlayStation. There's to be some kind of consequence. <laughs> I, think. I think he needs to slap himself time. at that point. Yeah, slap that. You out? slap October? yourself. <laughs> October that... what was the collection? Uh, October something. Yeah, I don't know. It's October thirteenth. I think. Yeah, bro. Come on. It's been a while. Get with it. Yo, man. There's video games to be played. Uh, and those are one. Of, those are some of them right there. Podcast. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It is true. Yeah. You're missing that's like though, the the beta for Uncharted Four. I, I agree with Greg. It's kind of lacking. And actually, yeah. it's for something I wanted to actually bring it up before, but I didn't want to interrupt and steal his thunder. The one thing that I don't like about it, and I feel like he didn't really get across, is that you know with, with the Uncharted Four game, like they, it shouldn't. You know, I I understand you grow and you want to utilize properties, but you don't have to copy something. You know, and you know, for a different game, you know, leave Last of Us multiplayer the great way it is. Don't try to, you know, make 
Uncharted, Last of Us multiplayer, you know, make it its own thing. And so they took way too many things and it was, it, it just didn't blend at all. And also, not only that, but like the, even the environments didn't flow very well. The gunplay was kind of lacking for, a, you know, this stage of games. You know, there was a lot of things that held it back. I literally played three matches. I was like, I'm I bored. think the maps are going to have their own tweaks. And we only got two in the beta so far. Um, so I think the map selection at a, a uh, apparently, or not apparently, but now with the grappling hook, I think all their previous maps, nobody else played Uncharted 2 or 3 multiplayer. The grappling hook was it was probably one of the coolest additions to, it, yeah. it's almost on the same scale of adding like the, the wall running for a call. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I equated to that. It was actually pretty cool. It, it changed the way that you're playing the game. For sure. Enough, but there's a lot of stuff that really held it back to me. I was bored. Like I said, I played three matches. I was like, I'm bored as shit. And we only got in the beta, too. I don't want to get too down on the beta just because right. the beta, it was a beta. You know, that's not going to be the final product. We only got one game type mode. They have, like, 12 game types altogether Ooh. between Uncharted 2 and Uncharted 3. We also have uh, co-op modes coming and stuff. So, so I hope, let me I ask hope you guys. Yes. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, you're good. That was it. What, do you think, okay, so, like, say the, say the single player campaign is, like, as great as we all hope and, and mm -hmm. as great as we think it'll be. And then the, the, the multiplayer is, like, how it is in the beta. Like, it's just, okay. Like, how much do you think that'll weigh down the reviews? That's the risk you have to that. Barely any at all. Yeah. 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 I I, review I agree. wise, I don't think it, it should at all. Uh, not I agree. That. No. I think that's worth 0.5 just because it's part of the total package. Sure. Yeah, for sure. And Uncharted 2 and 3 made it right. such a bigger deal with the co ops and they added survival modes and everything like that. So if they especially want to include those types of modes as well, then it's definitely going to be a bigger deal. All right. Let's, uh, let's move on here, guys. We got another mail time. This one comes from Dustin. Uh, Dear Dolly Does PlayStation, what features would you like to see implemented into the PS4 or? Or next generation consoles in general in the coming years. Sincerely, DJ Arduin. Mm. Folders! I agree. Folders, 100%. Yep, loud enough. It, it, I really it, want to be able to pin my favorites directly onto my media bar. That, that, you know what? Listen, I don't even care if I don't get folders. Give me a way to, you know, let's say I don't play, like Rocket League. I had to literally go in and search for Rocket League in there. But that's, I don't play many other games. It's just like mm. all these other media things that you know, were in the way. Because I'd like to have, like, like there are a few – like there's usually a game I'm playing that week and then I use YouTube, Netflix. Like I want to be yeah. able to just paste those things there permanently. Stop fucking moving them every yeah. time I put a new game in. That's one. And then another big one for me is – the option to have notifications when your friends come online, I feel like it's crazy that that's not there yet. Yeah, and they need to go the extra step, too. They need to have it so where you can only turn it on notifications for, for favorites. Exactly. If you have, like, a right, certain right. group, only that group of friends will show up as notifications. Even individual. If yeah. it had, like, if you click right. on that person's profile and it's like, Would you, you like find me with this person? person? Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, just give all the options you can. You can't go through this topic without Derek, you know, having a good point there. Name change. They need to have name changes, 100%. Uh, that's yeah. just something that that's, they've had to have for years. I, I General, it's just nah, I think it's that huge for any of us because I, I, yeah. I'm not going to change my name anytime yeah. soon. I don't care personally about it, but I understand why people do want to change their names. Another one for me, and it seems almost confirmed that it's coming at this point. I've always, always wanted remote play on PC. I think that now that we can hook up our PS4 controller to our computers so easily, imagine being able to just turn on your PS4 from anywhere in the world on your laptop, have it on your big screen on your computer, and just using your PS4 controller with your laptop or PC and playing it seamlessly with pretty low lag, low latency, as we've seen with remote play. It works pretty well. That would be freaking awesome the to do that anywhere. Who is going to support that? What what system is going Isn't to support that? I think that's happening yeah they Shuhei happening, said they're working but, on it yeah right they're working on it but with who that the, i think i mean the biggest problem you have to remember is that i mean unless they're partnering up with microsoft who, which wouldn't make any sense for no, me they're making a, a client that'll run from pc and mac right they're making it, but that's why it's taking so long there's a lot of people like like drew and the way drew said it was you know i don't understand why we don't you know and there's a lot of people that don't understand why you know you can't but they don't understand, you know, Microsoft has, um, you know, the cor they, they cornered that market. There's no reason for them to support it. So Sony would have to make their own driver for it. And the problem with making a driver is you have to make sure that that driver doesn't take a lot of resources. Uh, I mean, PC. Sony is the one who started remote play. Like, they're, right. they're the ones who did it first. Like, if anybody kind of spearheaded that whole thing, that was definitely I mean, Sony. Um, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, you know, okay, what is your computer running on right now? 
I don't understand what we're even talking about anymore, <laughs> to be honest yeah, what with you. you. What do you mean with the computer? In order to support remote play, the system, the system software on your PC has to support it, right? They just need to so, have an application that you download to your right, computer. Yeah. Right, so they have to create their own for the PC that's supported by the PC that won't I mean, use a lot. So Sony is not that lacking. lacking when it comes to software development. I'm sure they can no, develop an application. They just made an app for it's, iPhone and Android. Yeah, for the messages. Like, they, they yeah, do this I kind like of that. stuff. Yeah, uh, I don't think it's... I'm not, I'm not with you, man. I don't think it's really all that difficult for them, especially because they understand the framework probably yeah. better than anyone of remote play. At they this just point. need to uh, take that and make it work on PC. I'm sure it can't be that hard for them to take the PS4 remote play functionality on the Vita and find some way to adapt that to PC and Mac. I just, I know it's going to take them a little bit of time. I just don't think that it, I definitely don't think it's out of the question. I think that it's definitely something that's going to come. out of the question. I think it's going to come very soon, but yeah, there's I a think reason so why it hasn't come yet. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying it's I think it off. hasn't come yet because I don't think they felt that urge uh, until, like you said, Microsoft recently kind of, since they started, it's like, oh, I mean, it's something we could do for a while now, but now we actually have a reason to because yeah, people might expect like, it. Yeah. I feel like the announcement itself was kind of just like stumbled out of them. Like people were like, oh, this could be a cool thing. And then Sony was like, yeah. Oh, we we're working on that, that guys. Yeah, we're we working on that. that. <laughs> guys, start working on the remote play for the PC. Yeah, everyone was like, no, no, no. Um, yeah. As far as features for me go, I, the one that really ticks me off is the fact of the matter that you can't delete any trophies from your trophy list. Um, and yeah. before people start ragging on me for this, it's for games that like um, I know I won't go back to. Wait, I thought you and could I do that now. Through the story. You can delete trophies, but only if they're at 0%, oh, which okay, is yeah. dumb because like some games I'll start for in day and I'm like, I'm never going to play this game again. But now I have a 2% trophy list because yeah. I got one trophy during the stream. Can and that's just why that's a need. Because for unsightly. me, for my trophy list, I'm very OCD with like organizing stuff in my life. So Same. when I go down my trophy list and I have like AC, um, Assassin's Creed Unity, 100%, Assassin's Creed Syndicate, 100%, and then Soma is at two. I'm like, really? And so it's I mean, just I guess that's I guess that's one of those things that I mean, I, I was about to be like, there's no reason that they need to do that, but that could be a really simple fix that they added. A, in, they already, like, yeah, they already right, added it for it zero. Be, yeah. And the so thing I, is, I, it's not that big simple. of a deal, I guess. The trophy, the trophy hunting community is like the core PlayStation community. So yeah. like something that would appease them is like, is a pretty big deal. And like, yeah. I totally get it. Man. Like even this transformers game, like yeah. when I beat it, whatever, even if it has to remove like the two trophies I got, fine, get rid of it. I don't want to look at it. It's, yeah. it's messing up my list. Mm -hmm. It's making me mad. I think this I is something they might be working on, actually, considering that recent survey they had where they, they didn't just I think they talked about library and that in particular. But that just makes me think that maybe they understand how people feel about hiding things is yeah. that in, in their survey. It was about hiding games from your library. That makes no sense to me. But no. I guess they do realize that this is the kind of thing that people get upset about. They have OCD when it comes yeah. to organization. <laughs> they want to hide trophies. They want to hide games in their trophy list. They want to hide games from their library. Yeah. Uh, and I think Sony is starting to realize that. And the, yeah, and it's tough so? to me, like, if I want to go on Platinum a game, it's like Batman Arkham Origins. Like, yeah. I love that game. And if you make it like Arkham Knight and Arkham City, where I can go back 17 years later and still go through the game and collect all the Riddler trophies and get the Platinum, that's one thing. But when you give me Arkham Origins, where I have to go into your god-awful, atrocious multiplayer and trophy boost with my friends in order to get that 100%, it's like, really, dude? Like, just let me delete the game at this point. I got through the story. Greg, I, I got one for you. What about this? What yeah. about... What about a platinum mm. level? <laughs> oh god. Right? You mm -hmm. platinum it and then if you want to get the rest of the multiplayer trophies, there's like a like next level. You know what I mean? That would so be so you can get your platinum. As long and as then it for wouldn't the ruin my hundred percent. Yeah. The hundred percent thing to me is like mm -hmm. if they did it like platinum level and then like multi platinum level, I'd be totally okay with that. The DLC like if comes they, out and yeah, then your shit like, goes back down to like seventy five percent. Oh like, dude, it's the worst. It's the worst. Yeah, um, that is annoying. Oh. When that happens, it always makes me angry. So that's what my one. What do you guys think? Play. Do you guys want any updates to PlayStation Live? Uh, live from PlayStation? No. I mean, I do think that they kind of took a step backwards, in my opinion, yeah. when it came, comes to Live from PlayStation. Asking, yeah. I think that there's still a way for them to organize that better. I'm not sure personally what that is. I don't know how they could highlight uh, the little streams in a bigger way, and I'm not sure if they really should do that. We want them to do that because we're one of the littler streams when it comes to the wide variety that you can now find Live from PlayStation. But, I mean, this is what makes sense, right? This is what people expect. They want to see the top channels. They want to see the top, you know, uh, interactive broadcasts. They want to filter by game. They have pretty much everything that you should expect. I, I don't know what else they could do. Do you have anything in mind, Mike? No, I was just asking, that, you know, what my, the curiosity more so came from do we want it? You know, mm -hmm. I mean, they changed it already once. 
um, in a big way it, to the negative, you know, like you said. But I didn't know if like yeah, if anybody here actually cared if they changed it again or if it's kind of like one of those things where, well, I guess for other people, sure, it could change things. But for us, we're kind of done I mean, personally, it. what I would love them to do, and they won't do it because we just got the Twitch app, I would love for them to show all streams live from yeah. PlayStation so that we show up on here live from PlayStation. Mm-hmm. Uh, that would be awesome, but I, that's not going to happen. They mm-hmm. have, they know what they're doing with live from PlayStation. Right. They're, they're highlighting PlayStation streams. It's smart. It is mm-hmm. smart. It works really well for them. So I think they'll stick with that. All right. That was a great question there. That one came from Dustin. Yeah. We got two more in the show. Right now, we're going to move on to our trailer of the month. We didn't really have a consensus this month. There were a lot of great trailers because we just had PlayStation experience. But, uh, you know, we didn't want to do Final Fantasy VII Remake. That's kind of an obvious choice. But we, <laughs> we already discussed that to death, uh, you know, on Sunday. Um, and As well as Uncharted. and, stuff and like Yeah, Uncharted yeah. and stuff like that. Uh, but there is one that we didn't go that far into. So uh, let's get to Drew, the can I pause you for a second? Yeah, sure, go ahead. Before you show the trailer. Guys, we have 32 people in the room. Thank you all for watching us. 36 <laughs> yeah. now, it's just jumped to. If anybody is new to our channel at all and you like what you see, Drew puts in a lot of hard work here. And now you can see it in all of its beauty and glory. All you have to do is hit that heart button. It's in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. So tap that from any device you're watching us from. And then you'll get follow notifications and email notifications for whenever we go live and do this thing that you are enjoying. Yeah. We're also on all the other channels that you can see, guys, YouTube, Twitter, uh, Facebook. Just uh, look at the banner at the top if you want to access any of those. All right, so let's get into our trailer of the month. I, I am purdy. Evan Petty Whisker Children, <laughs> king of Ding Dong Dell. Who, who are you? Never mind who. The question is where? You're just like... <laughs> They're here for you. We need to leave. Drew has this down. It's for me. No, Can't it's you see? Me. It's a coup. You do as I say. This is the dawn of a new yes, era. Yes. For all me no coney. Oh, this is so sad. I know you will. Not really my son. That's a girl. <laughs> it's a, no, it's a boy. No, it's a boy. Oh, the blonde's a boy? That's a boy. Yeah, that's what Kristen said. She's like, that's a boy? That kind of makes me sad. I wanted it to be a female. Oh, nah. that sucks. Sorry. It says King Evan at the beginning. <laughs> right? Like, it said, like, it is. Oh, that's Evan obvious. the boy king. Yeah. This is frustrating. We serve you now. I, I like that he has animal on. stuff going on. He's got the ears. He's got the yeah, tail. Yeah, that's cool. At least we have the this female. This is where it all begins, King Oh, Evan. I thought it was going to be, like, two girls going on an adventure together. Fuck. Huh. You thought the guy, the grown adult, was a girl as well? No, 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 no. The red hair. Okay. Yeah. Something tells me it's not Dragon from Dragon Ball Z. Shunra. Dude, the art style is so beautiful. Yeah. I love it, though. I know. I didn't think it could get any better than how it looked with the first Nino Kuni. But, but it totally did. Yeah. It's like it looks like a Studio Ghibli film. It really does. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Yeah, that's what I was just going to say. It looks like a film. It's crazy. Oh, God. Do they have films for this series? I don't think so. No, they don't. They should. <laughs> this could totally be a television show on like a kids' network that I would watch, oh, aka Pokemon, because that's essentially what it is. Everyone can live happily ever after. It really does look like a girl. <laughs> it just pisses me off now. I was thinking it was like Yvonne, the queen. Yvonne. And the boy king. <laughs> <laughs> the worst. Nino Kuni, Nino Nana. What? No. <laughs> Bad. That's a kind of funny thing. They always call it Ninu Nana. I like Re- the title too, Revenant Kingdom. Yeah, they always go with weird Japanese stuff, but it always makes me happy. It's mm. good stuff right there. All right, so he is bursting with excitement to talk about this. Well, I'm just uh, I'm just taking it in. I don't know how I feel about it. Yeah, you Nino. don't really know much about uh, Nino Kuni. I don't know. I I heard it compared to Pokemon, and yep. that perks my ears up. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. very similar to Pokemon. You capture little cute monsters, and you level them up. You feed them. Uh, Dean, it's like a perfect combination of Pokemon meets Kingdom Hearts. Mm. It's turn-based, though. Yes, I was just going to say. So it, mm-hmm. it reminds me more, if I had to compare two series, I would it's very a- much combine it with Pokemon and Child of Light, um, almost. I think Child of Light, that, it's not the same exact combat system, but the turn-based nature of it, and especially the graphical style, are very, very similar. Um, There's a little more I- excitement to it than some turn-based titles, though, because you do <laughs> have the ability to run around the map to get into position, and you can actually, that does determine if you get attacked, like you can dodge certain uh, you know, attacks if you move around the map. And I think you, there is there even a dodge 
button? Yes. Correct, there is. There is. Yeah. Yep. So it does have a little bit more activity to it than a normal turn-based RPG. It's very much so a chess match, too, when you go into battles. It's yeah. always, like, plotting ahead. What am I going to be doing at this moment? What am I going to be doing here? Um, as far as, oh, so it's like, kind of like Transistor, in a way. A little bit. Almost. Yeah, a little bit. Not as, yeah, not as... No, you could, there's a lot more. There's a lot more. Like, um, I remember watching you play it, Drew, mm -hmm. uh, a few times, and you know, I, I really was into. It. I just it was something I never grabbed. The world yeah, is beautiful. Like, oh, and the yeah. story it tells is amazing. The music, and, the music oh, is great. God. And the music is one of my favorite parts. What I love so much about it, last generation, is that it was one of the few JRPGs that still has an overworld map where yeah. you're like a little character on this big map running around going into towns. Everything's not to scale, but that's what's kind of charming about it. Yeah. And you can fly around the world in a dragon. Um, and I, I think they use that to their advantage. Yeah. You the, had, you got me with the dragon part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like the it, story, Dean. Dude, it, it's that's really, really awesome. charming. It's a great great fantasy uh and it has like uh the first one especially has a lot of sweet somber moments uh that like you might cry like literally as unrelatable as yeah, it I won't. seems i, I cry. promise so as unrelatable this, as it seems it's totally such a relatable game yeah it's with this do we say, do we think that this is going to come as a remake or a port over to ps4 i hope so with all the other ones you i mean it's not unrealistic to expect on that i mean we have it on ps3 you know, it was it was at the end of last generation, and they don't really need to do too much to it. You know, they they could actually keep it. You know, with the graphical style that they went in, they don't really need to touch up much of anything on the game at all. Uh, it, it, I feel like that they would be really missing out on porting it over, unless they go with like the whole White Knight Chronicles situation. Ooh, never compare it to that. White Knight Chronicles was heinous. Um, no, but, but what they did was smart. They made you, they gave you both of them in the same disc and made you play the first one before you play the second one. No, yeah, I think that might be a good idea. So It'd be a great fan service, a great right. you know thing to give to the fans and just be like, hey guys, Nino Nino Kuni 2, Nino Nana comes with <laughs> the second right. game. And you just get it along with it. That would be awesome. Right, on the right. Disc. And I mean, they, it was already free for PS Plus, so it's not like they, I mean, they already got their investment returned to them. Yeah, that's so. for, that's true. But kind of like what they did with uh, Bioshock Infinite and Assassin's Creed too, giving right. you the original. So AC three, I think, gave you Assassin's God, Creed the first game. So happy though. And um, I feel so bad that I missed out. You on know what? Other games should do that. Now that I'm thinking about it, uh, South Park. When the new South Park comes out, they should totally put the first one on there for PS4. That would be such a sweet deal. Sixty bucks for both South Park games. I don't know if I could go back and play the first one again. Well, it would be a lot for the people that didn't play it. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, we're falling a little bit behind, so let's get into topic number three here. This one goes to Dean in a moment. So let me get those comments. <laughs> topic number three from your boy Dean. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, Dean. Dino. My topic this week is. Mm. Stay with me. We're gonna go down a little bit of a trail here. Okay. Uh, I stole it with a twist. Okay. From Kind of funny. Bum, bum, they bum. talked about they talked about uh, what game would you want to play that does not exist yet. I want to talk about what PlayStation exclusive game do you want to play that does not yet exist. You might ask yourself, well, how would I know if it's PlayStation exclusive? Uh, we'll be the judge of that. <laughs> okay, Here's you can definitely tell if it feels like it fits PlayStation. You know okay. what I mean? Here's my my yeah. my first fantasy, I guess oh, you could hey. say. Ooh. Hideo Kojima s somehow mm -hmm. takes Metal Gear away from Konami. I knew this. I don't know how it I happens, but it happens. He 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 somehow buys it off of them or he sues them. Mm -hmm. I don't give a shit. Konami <laughs> loses it. It goes to Kojima. He goes back to PlayStation with it and recreates Metal Gear 1, Metal Gear 2 and ties it in to Phantom Pain all in a glorious next generation title. To cap off the series, finally end it for good. Have so you everything want a remake? come. All of the you can make any game you wanted, and you're going to make a remake of the games you've already played. Metal Gear One and Two are for <laughs> Nintendo, like the original yeah. Nintendo. Like they're yeah. they're completely outdated. And if he were to remake them, it would be a completely different experience. I want him to do that. I want him to make those into an experience that ties in with the current Metal Gear games, which are so much different, and to have a way as well to make it connect with the end of Phantom Pain to just bridge that gap, finally close off the entire series and say goodbye to Metal Gear for good, and Kojima can then move on to bigger and better things. 
That's my okay. PlayStation exclusive fantasy. It's a little right bit there. of a cop out because you are the well. The question is, it doesn't exist. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It, why it doesn't exist? But if you're if you're freaking <laughs> one and two, mashing them up into Phantom Pain, that's three games that exist. Already. Okay, well then, can I go with what I have on screen right now? Yes. I want Chrono to come back. I want Square Enix since they're they seem to kind of be going with legacy and nostalgia now. Finally. Chrono Break was a game that was trademarked a decade ago, and then it finally it lost its trademark because they waited so long on it, and I guess decided not to develop it, but they did have something in mind for the Chrono series. I would love to see them try and do an amazing time travel story again, uh, and uh, since Chrono Cross was exclusive to PlayStation, I think that I can... I can get away with that, right? I accept. I accept. Okay. Is there any? Are there any specific, like, any features you would want to see added that, like, they never did before, or like anything? I want it to be a branching storyline. I want it, since that seems to be the big thing now, right? Time travel. We saw it with uh, Life is Strange. That's the perfect mm-hmm. opportunity to to do one of these branching mm-hmm. branching paths and yeah. uh, dialogue choices and all that kind of stuff. Do Chrono with all the crazy time travel, but have it so that it has like thirty freaking endings that could happen. And they honestly, they kind of did that already with the original Chrono games, but they could do it in a much bigger way now uh, than mm-hmm. they ever could before. I like it. I, I accept this. Okay, cool. I got one that I thought of when I thought of this question. It's called Famous. Oh, God. Uh, oh my God! <laughs> You're the worst. I'm the best. Just hear it out, dude. <laughs> I don't even need to hear it. I know what it is already. <laughs> tell me what it is. Tell me. Tell me what it's it is. It's the opposite of infamous. <laughs> kind of, yeah. <laughs> so this is this is my this is what I want. Okay, famous. I don't want them to reset anything. You know, second some Cole and and Delson. Delson wasn't really as well liked, but I want the, I I'm, I'm want it, I want them to own it. I want them to keep this all everything that's happened. Right, Continuity. Delson. Uh, comes back from the good ending, okay? And he's just a different... So he doesn't kill his aunt for no, no reason at the end? I'm talking good ending. Good ending's <laughs> canon, right? And good ending Cole, also canon. Lightning Bolt, okay. that whole situation, okay? Good. good. So both good endings are canon in my dream here. And in this game called Famous, Delson has become, like, the Iron Man. Like, he's everyone's favorite hero. He's, like, super arrogant, super brash. He's, like, power crazy, and Cole steps in and is like, finally, like shows himself, reveals himself. He's like, hey, I've been living. He's like, I've been in hiding. I don't want to live that life anymore. He's like, but you're getting a little bit out of control. And I feel like you need a couple of pointers. Delson doesn't like this. Mm. This is where we get the adversaries that we needed in Second Son. And then like, Delson Civil War. reveals his main superpower. He pulls off his mask and it's Batman. Not and it's got them against like no, but Dean, you could actually this could actually be deep. Yeah, he's, he might be onto something because then Delson could actually like go back in time into Infamous Two and be the beast that's consuming everybody's powers. Good, mm. but probably not. One thing I do have to say: Famous is a terrible name for this game. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a Kim Kardashian game or something, like yeah, paparazzi. Yeah, that's what happens when you have original ideas instead of just taking old NES titles. No. <laughs> Mike's the guy that comes up with names and nothing else. <laughs> Mike, that, you do that. that concept, Come up with though, a name for I this game. With the name. I want another good. I want another. I want another great Infamous game before yeah. this console generation ends. And I feel like bringing Cole back. To take out the piece of shit character that was Delson would be so redeeming. That would be an amazing way. Damn it, Bradley. You took my game. Ah, in the chat room, Bradley took it, but I'll say it anyway. I can't even see it. Go, quick. Okay, perfect. So my PlayStation exclusive franchise is something that already exists, except not in video game form. Doctor Who. I want it done by Sucker Punch because they're very good at open world games and I want it in the vein of Bioware's open Mass Effect world where you travel to different galaxies, different planets, meet different species because Doctor Who has their own species that well, don't exist in the universe. Why you Bioware itself? Because it's PlayStation exclusive, Mike. It's the question. Mm-hmm. We're on a PlayStation exclusive question right now on a PlayStation exclusive podcast right now. Um, it was, play- yeah, that was the question. PlayStation so exclusive. Sucker Punch needs to do it. They're going to be open world, and like I said, it's going to be in the vein of Bioware, where you can jump from planet to planet. Um, you get in your TARDIS, and you can fly to different planets, do different species. Um, and on each planet, there's different side quests that you can do specific to the, the species itself, like they have in Doctor Who, um, a species that can only 
um, talk to you telekinetically. So maybe all their orbs get cut off that are their attachments in order to speak to people and you need to redo that. They'd have side quests, main boss on each thing because they've built up all this main series characters. And then it could also introduce people to Doctor Who in a brand new way because there's a different Doctor after it regenerates every time. Tell me that's not the best game ever. I think it's a good idea. Yeah, it's not a bad idea at all. So yeah. good. And you could call it Doctor New. Uh, no, no, another bad title for a game. Done. You guys are terrible. You guys are the this. worst at that. I don't think I don't think famous is that bad of a name for a game. I, it does, uh, it I doesn't mean, sound uh, like a superhero. I think game. it was a. No. I think it was a little. It's a little lazy. Uh, reaction. <laughs> <to the laughs> little, I mean, let's be realistic. It's a little lazy. It's not awful. Like, you know. No, yeah, it's definitely a little lazy. But the name's not important. The concept's what I'm after here. I agree. I agree with you there, Mike. So I, I, one of them flashed on the screen. I have two. Um, one's kind of like a, a really quick thing. They just really need to bring back the whole uh, Legend of Dragoon franchise. Yo, know, everybody's clamoring for more and more RPGs, and I feel like that one's such a. I feel like that one's so underrated because so little people know about it. You know, it was never really a big famous one, and it should have been. You know, for all intents and purposes, but that one, you know, needs to be redone. I don't really give a shit who does it. You know, I just want it to be done and done well. Um, but really, the first thing that came to my mind, because we're always talking about we want more dinosaur stuff, and with Resident Evil being so terrible in the last few iterations, how about Dino Crisis? Yeah, I remember that game. There was mm. like three of those games, actually, yeah. if I remember right. Dino yeah. Crisis, yeah. And, and it was good. They were fun. They were, you know, they terrified the shit out of you. I never was so scared of a fucking raptor before in my life. So, I mean, those could be done really, really well. I don't know who would do it at this point. You know, we can't really trust... You know, anybody, anybody with the. Uh, I guess it would probably be Guerrilla Games when they're done with Horizon Zero Dawn. But, I guess. Right? I don't know. I mean, well, I mean, there could be other studios that do it. Yeah. Um, ben is working on it right now. Yeah, right. Yeah. Just, what about Kingdom the, Hearts the, 4 by Naughty Dog? <laughs> no. The reason I had Naughty Dog up on the screen is I do like the idea of them doing a sci fi game, and I do want it to be Savage Starlight. Oh, that'll be cool. That'll be fucking cool. I want them I to take that so IP happy. that they created within The Last of Us and actually turn it into Man. a full flesh thing. Oh Mass Effect, God. but by Naughty Dog. Them. You should send them a letter yeah. for about this situation. And going back to The Legend of Dragoon, I put that on screen because Sony used to be known for making RPGs. That was their one that they did, Legend of Dragoon. That was a Shuhei Yoshida production there. He yeah. was the one who really mm -hmm. spearheaded that thing. And the rumors are from Verendus on, uh, on NeoGAF, who is now, I would say, one of the most trusted insiders that I've ever seen because he totally nailed Final Fantasy 7. He said it was happening and he said it was episodic game. And he said that... that and see, that's the type of game... I don't need open world like you do for Final Fantasy because there was no airship. You know, there was... I mean, you could go and travel to here and there, but I don't really... Really, to me, Legend of Dragoon was the RPG that was all about the story. It didn't have any... I mean, it had the RPG elements so, of, you know, the open world and everything like that. Yeah. But really, it was a story and everything yeah, like that. Yeah, I wasn't trying swag. to say that they would make it episodic. I'm just saying that I trust Verendus now because for him to call a year and a half ago that Final Fantasy VII was going to be remade and be episodic, I trust this guy now. So he... Besides that Final Fantasy VII rumor, he said that Sony is working on a new JRPG series to rival Final Fantasy. Entirely new, new IP, never been heard of before. I want it to be like the original Legend of Dragoon team to come yeah, back awesome. and, that would be and do a new JRPG styled game that kind of blends. We've always, I've always talked about this before. I would love to see a, a, a great mesh of Western sensibilities and Japanese sensibilities in an RPG from Sony, um, from the Legend of Dragoon team. And I think that would be really, really cool to see. Yeah, that'd be absolutely perfect. Yeah, I think they should make a game um, done by Sony, maybe by Team Japan, because I really liked their weird vampire game that never was a big deal and never had trophies, which always pissed me off because I bought all five episodes. Um, but they should make a game where you play as a little platformer guy. He's an electrician, and you go to save a prince instead of a princess. Twist! <laughs> It's a gay electrician. <laughs> Do it, Sony. It's, so a gay good. it's a gay electrician. We <laughs> we needed the explanation at the end, or it just it will you please have name this game? I'm very curious. If that's what it's called, the gay electrician. We <laughs> need a on. name for him, though. I don't know what we call him. Probably like Philip. <laughs> just Philip. Is Philip the, the gay name like, that you think of? Philip, Philip, like like little Philip or Matthew are both gay names, but I thought Matthew was like a little too much. Every gay no. guy I've ever that dated, might be it, influenced by recent events for you, Greg. But no, I have a, <laughs> mm, I have another date this week. It's with another Matthew. Oh, okay, never mind that. <laughs> Every gay guy I've talked to on Long Island, at least, is named Matthew. So God bless. Interesting. Mm. Yeah, weird. The gay electrician. <laughs> 
<laughs> what about the chat? Does anybody have any good ideas for uh, PlayStation exclusives that they've never played in the chat room? Um, Bradley Stone. <laughs> Everyone's saying, wow, the gay electrician. Um, I feel like everyone would play that game, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, Bradley said, I need Sucker Punch to make the Doctor Who game. Yes, I agree with you. That needs to be a thing. Um, Dino Crisis, everyone's agreeing with that. Nobody really coming up with their own ideas. <laughs> Johnny Poolside says, 200-foot dinos playing tennis? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I, I just read that one. I was thinking, what if they actually made like a Sony, kind of like how they try to do for PlayStation Battles, like All-Star Battle? What if they did like a sports thing, kind of like how Nintendo's done with their characters, but done like a collection of like all your all the Sony stars playing like soccer, yo, know, yeah. and all the Sony stars playing like baseball. Like, dude, people I'm down for that, game. but as you just said, I'm down for them to try again when PlayStation All Stars Battle Royale. Mm-hmm. As long as the right team it. does it and they let them have their time and they're like, you guys just do whatever you feel. They want. had the right team. They really did. They had a lot of great you know, uh, fighting they game did. developers on that game. They just weren't given the budget and the resources. And it yeah. all, it showed entirely through that fucking menu that was... system and the story that was being told through artwork. Dude, it's like, are you kidding me right now? This is a Wars. PlayStation exclusive. This is the PlayStation game that people have been waiting be years for like to combat Smash Brothers. And this is what you did. This is like, right. this is as far as you went with it. I was just that somebody, was like a please. Development project and they had like three and a half years to make it. When I went back in with Dean, I forgot how bad it was until we went back. All I had to do was go into a match with him and that was it and it was the worst clunky situation ever (laughs) it was absolutely awful somebody please sing the menu song because i can't think i honestly i don't know it oh it's so good that's the one thing that that game did holy shit you know that's funny because i remember everybody saying that when the game came out so i did go online and listen to the menu music just because like word of mouth and you're right i remember (laughs) that the music was awesome there's certain yeah, games like I that. Batman it. Arkham Knight is one of mm-hmm. them. Uh, Metal Gear Solid 4, uh, Guns of the Patriots, where you just sit in the menu because it's Kingdom like... Kingdom Hearts 2. Kingdom Hearts 2, Kingdom Hearts 1. Oh yeah, Kingdom really Hearts is it. fucking awesome title yeah. music, dude. Uh, yep. Kingdom Hearts uh, is the best music. That's great awesome. music. Greedy Biscuits, Medieval. Yeah, it's kind of crazy because we had a tease had recently. That, it was wait. not real, but that guy did an amazing job on yeah. making that look real. So yeah, some, everybody kind of got their hopes up on that one. But it could happen. Oh, it could. Cool. I gotta look this up. Yeah, please. I'll, you know, I'll look it up so I can actually we can listen to it. Yeah, put it on because that was actually really good tra- uh, menu music. Yeah, hold on one sec. Um, hopefully, we have enough time before we get to mail time here. Mail time. Dude, the thing that makes me excited is when like uh, I feel like all IPs and all ideas now are kind of just done in different ways. If that makes sense, like even The Last of Us, it's about a virus that like gets out. Like we've seen that before. It's an awesome game. But, like, what is there that's out that's, like, a brand new... Like, what could be a brand new IP? Dean's rocking out to the title Well, song. Savage Starlight would be a brand new IP. No, but I mean, like, brand new idea completely. Like, oh, nothing yeah. in space. Like, nothing... Like, you know what oh, I mean? Oh, no, like, dude, the Dino Crisis game that I had the idea for, I didn't really get into it too much because I didn't want to take too much time. But, like, it's kind of like Lost World where the, the dinosaurs now have invaded the cities. And you have to go through, the like, a, a destroyed city and try to find a way to, like, herd them and, you know, take them out. Okay. I don't know if you guys can hear this, but I'm playing it right now. I can't, but I need to look it up for myself. And we'll play this stuff. during mail time. Okay. For you guys. Let me turn it down a little bit. It is good. It's good stuff. You guys can't hear it. Alright, so Dear uh. It Only Does PlayStation. Do you feel we still have a lot to look forward to with the PS4, or will Sony just ride its success until the PS5? I think what he's asking here is, do we see the return of arrogant Sony because of the PS4's mm-hmm. success? Uh, I mean, we could. I think it's still a little early to see that. The problem is, I, we kind of saw that a little bit with the PlayStation Experience. Is that? Am I right in saying that? Do you guys agree with? No, that? I don't or agree that it was them getting arrogant. I think it was just them misunderstanding their audience. Yeah. And Maybe. Ju- okay. Honestly, just misunderstanding what people expected. I, I, I think that they thought them. they had a great show on their hands, and they did. They had a pretty decent show. They had yeah. they had some games that, like Neo, for instance, everybody keeps looking over, oh, yeah, overlooking no, no. that, but that's Ninja Ow. Gaiden, but done by the Ninja Gaiden team, exclusive to PS4. Looks like Onimusha, looks like Ninja Gaiden, looks like Dark Souls. Like that's gonna. I think that's going to be an exciting game when that comes out, but everybody's forgetting that because everybody went into a conference like, I need God of War, I need Sony yeah. Bend, I need this i need that and just because they didn't deliver those specific it's games more, yeah. people are disappointed i think it's just more all of us 
and not only us, but like IGN, every video game outlet was overhyping and overselling, I think, what the conference was going to expect just because that first year was so like, wow, we get an extra thing and wow, they're going to show us like big, awesome game titles and stuff here. Like nobody expected that at all. Yeah, so I think I mean, we went into it the second year and we were like, we're going to get this. We're going to get this. And then when we didn't get it, we were like, yeah. Wah. Wah. Aside from that, though, I don't see them getting like cocky or anything like that. Game Killer says arrogant Sony. I don't know of the Sony and we all do. Uh, the early PS3 was this. Yeah. That was, was 100% the reason why it did so bad in the beginning because they got very cocky from the success of PS2. PS2 did so well for them that... They the literally PS2 said, you will get a second job to buy yep. PS4 or 3 yeah. because it's going to be that good. <laughs> that's what they right. said, literally. Yeah, that the, came out of their the, mouths. Um, but I don't, I, you know what? I don't think so. That's I mean, A, I, I think it, there's a lot of other people in charge that have learned... You know, there's a lot of people that are like, we fucked up bad, and, and we can't do that again. And then, realistically, I don't see them falling down the same holes. But, you know, I don't remember too much of PS2 conference era, and I don't know if you even do, Drew. I don't know if you watched too much back then yourself yeah, with PS2. I did, yeah. But I, I don't remember them ever being as fan and game-centric as they are now. Right now, it's they seem like the really like the fun the conferences has cha have changed a lot. They used to be yeah. a more like business focused. Mm -hmm. Like uh, there, would, you saw. I mean, not that long ago, you would have the first twenty minutes of every single conference about numbers, sales numbers and literally right, yeah. charts and like PowerPoint presentations. Like, when's the last time we saw that? Now, I think um, the last time I remember Enix. it is where they had Little Big Planet show right. off GDC. the the graphs, and that was like kind of the bridge towards it and just never happening again. Now they realize right. all people want to see are games, and that's all we're going to show. But uh, yeah, I remember back in the PS2 games, they were pretty cocky then when they... I remember specifically one of the PS2 conferences when they, they were up like 3 to 1 on Xbox and GameCube, and they're like, the war is over, we already won. Like, it literally just said that on screen. It's like, <laughs> please, PS2 is a winner. Like, you know it already. Like, they, right. were, they were so cocky leading, and then that led into PS3. Um, I, I do think that we don't have to worry about about that to be honest yeah. with you though because they're on they're not that far ahead first off yeah they're ahead but they're not that far ahead um they're maybe two to one at most it's not like ps2 Dude, generation I'm really eager to see the numbers this mm -hmm. is actually one of those ones where i want to see the mpd asap the mpd and yeah. every and every console generation too we have to realize that they get always they're always a little bit longer than the last and they always get supported longer than that um ps3 is still getting supported and still getting free games from playstation plus so i don't see the ps4 like and like you said like they learned from their mistakes i remember the ps3 launching at 600 dollars and they thought they were the shit when they unveiled the ps3 and i was like dude like that's not a good price <laughs> and then all the launch titles for it were shit too yeah. except for resistance wall of man and i was like guys come on but i think they they learned from that and i think they're very now especially with social media uh shoot Hey Yoshida literally tweets us all the time um, and if you ask him questions like outright game developers will do that too all those people are kind of more famous um, in their own right and when I say famous I mean to put that in quotes because they're not celebrities but to us they are um, I think I that uh, one of the reasons people might be thinking they're getting arrogant is because we're not seeing some of these, so many of these games that we know are in development but I yeah. honestly just think that's Sony being smart in this yeah, situation we yeah. have, and you just have to remember that that they're they're doing so well without the games like mm -hmm. right now like right. there's no reason for them to push these games forward keep them in the oven polish yeah. them to heaven and back because right. th they don't need them yet let yeah. wait until yeah, xbox but... starts pushing out the heavy hitters and getting desperate because they mm -hmm. probably will they might get desperate and start dropping the price and fire sales and crazy mm -hmm. shit like that that's when sony's like oh by the way we've got this god of war we got this you know i completely but, agree with you know what made me think about that originally was Naughty Dog. Um, I think it was a recent quote uh, from them, and they said, oh, we are thinking about making more games after Uncharted 4 for this generation of this console, but it'll only be like another two, maybe three games. And when I really put it into perspective, I'm like, we get so many games every year, but if you think about it, like one studio only puts out like three games total. Yeah on one console that's crazy to think about and when you yep. put it into a perspective like that it's like why not milk all of these studios and plot these games out like Drew said like when they're ready and when they need to be pushed and that's why I think maybe Final Fantasy 7 isn't as far away as we might think and the episodic part might be why that is because they are being pretty good about announcing games and not having them that far away yeah. uh, recently at least you know we don't get that too often where where it's like a game is announced and we have to wait through three Fantasy or four or five 13. yeah like we don't get that a lot too and anymore so I i'm glad that that's happened mike you're up with the uh, final topic of the night yes sir all right so sony made a big giant push and kind of threw everybody when they said they were getting very into the video and tv show side of everything with their company but it's kind of been a letdown so far with the exception of ratchet and clank so what 
is it that they would need to do? What would they need to add? What properties would they need to grab? What would they need to make in order to make it a redeemable service both to themselves and for us? Um, off the bat, I, I think we need to give Powers a second chance. It's only had mm. one season. Um, I know that the first season was pretty damn bad. God awful. But that being said, I think they have some different showrunners on the second season. Maybe they're trying uh, to step... A showrunner from Daredevil yeah. is actually going to So be maybe up. they're trying to step up their game a little bit there. Let's see if it, it works out in their favor. I, I just... I think Powers is, is not a bad property to try and grab. I think that was probably smart on them to try and do something like that. I think it might have been not so smart in that it's a show that requires a decent budget. And it shows when a show like this doesn't yeah. have a good budget behind it. Why not do something like, uh, I don't know, there's some games that don't need crazy budgets attached to them. Some Maybe a more human story. Um, so one of the things that comes to mind, there, there's a couple different things that I've had a thought of and I've been thinking about this all week. One of the things they could do with how much people love it, and this is where I would be okay with them using this franchise, what would you do if they took the Last of Us franchise and made other characters in that world and show how they were surviving and everything that happened in that? You kind of get to see a bit behind the scenes, whether it's like the days of the breakout uh, and everybody's going crazy or, you know, whether it's in that, you know, 10 year time period or whatever. I think you don't it would have be to really have cool to do that with the vignettes that we found in the last of us game. Um, like to see, I forget his name. Um, but the guy's story that you follow all Ish- throughout, Ishmael, I think right? Ishmael. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. Say, yeah. I but like to do that. the little vignette stories or even the one where, um, the love letter, the first interaction that I remember and will always go back to in the last of us when you're playing as Joel and you run into the house with Ellie and there's a click that runs uh, away and you see it like pan off the camera a little bit and when you go through you kill that clicker and then you pick up a note and it was from the guy who eventually turned into the clicker you just killed and it's a love note saying like guys I didn't make it I know I'm not going to make it and blah 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 just to see like those little vignette stories as like really one off cool, yeah. episodes I, I think that would think be really cool I think it might cool be a little more realistic to do what Mike was talking about in the beginning there was something more, a little more like Fear the Walking Dead as Game Killer just said because mm-hmm. once again we're going back to like a budgetary limitation here and yeah. I think Sony does need to be careful with that so if they go like a immediately post outbreak they don't have to worry about you know aging the environment and doing the um destruction porn and all that kind of stuff they just can just focus on human stories in a Mm -hmm. world that's kind of going to shit but it hasn't gone to a point yet where we have to like have vegetation growing everywhere and flooding and all this kind of stuff that's going to take a big toll on a budget um so i think that an early as we were saying immediately post outbreak last of us that could work Definitely could work. Right. The other one, uh, the other idea I thought would be the, the one group uh, that they, I feel like they really miss out on Target, and they're really they, they're nailing it with Ratchet and Clank, but they really should do a lot of franchises that they have towards kids. You know, they uh, I know they don't own the rights to Crash Bandicoot anymore, but they could. I mean, Knack is a perfect one. You know, tell me what kid doesn't like a robot that helps you out from you know another time that can morph into a bunch of different. I mean, uh, kids are gonna love t- stuff like that. If they make kid centric stuff like that, you know, that would get them into it. It would get the parents giving it attention. And you know, I mean, look at how many parents would just say Netflix for Hulu. You know, but if you can build your you know build your. Uh, I guess profile your your folder you know, on you know shows that your kids watch and he's oh he's watching his PlayStation shows mm-hmm. you yeah. know that would be amazing. The thing that I think that they screwed up with as far as like the one show that they did try to promote and now it's all over the PlayStation Gear Store and stuff like it obviously has its audience like they obviously got some ratings especially if they're doing a season two is with Powers and the thing that confused me about doubling down on that show is number one it was already a property. Um, that they tried to adapt and I remember when they first unveiled it too like they tried to make it such of a big deal and I feel like even them themselves they were kind of like really guys like I don't think this is as big of a deal as we're making it um, and then somebody in the chat room just before said infamous the thing that gets me about doubling down on superhero content is like Netflix has that and they're doing yeah. it so fucking well mm-hmm. that like you can't I didn't mean to bleep myself out there I don't know why I did that but um, they're doing it so fucking well that it gets to the point where it's like do we need another company to try to invest in that side of things or maybe right. you could do invest in a live action short uh 10 episode series on like a live action until dawn like that trailer was beautiful and the budget for that was a cabin in the woods like yeah all you have to do right. is put up some lights and stuff like that and give me a brand new cast of characters that maybe is getting chased by or the killer. be a little more experimental the, the first thing that sony ever did wasn't powers it was the tester um, yeah, I loved that. And though. yeah, the tester was fun. Uh, I, I think that, that they could do a few things like that that are really low on budget, and I think people would probably watch them if they came yeah. free with PlayStation Plus. Dean, we're not hearing too much from you. Is there any opinion on your part? Oh, he's oh, muted. Oh, that's why, Dean, you're muted. muted. That's why we don't hear you. We haven't heard anything from you this entire time. <laughs> he's so confused. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> um, maybe this reset your mic. Good. While he's doing that, I know Dima's a big fan and actually got me turned on uh, for exclusive PlayStation content uh, with Will Wheaton. He did a bunch of game uh, developers, like panels almost, where he sat down with like the creators of Treyarch he did, uh, Naughty Dog he did recently, and I believe it was Sucker Punch and Santa Monica was the season two of it. But this show has been going on for two seasons now. I think it's five episode seasons, and what he does is he takes like the big studios that are putting out a game this year to talk about like Uncharted 4 and uh, your past experiences with these games and such. I love that show as well. One, if you one of the other it. ideas that I had as well would be uh, kind of almost what you said and also what Drew said at the same time, taking you know doing a reality type thing. What's up? The test. No, I, I know Dean's kind of uh, Dean. Do you want me to uh, take you out of the call and then I'll add you back and see if that works? Yeah. It's... Oh, well, never mind. Oh, nope, you're good. <laughs> it wasn't. I didn't have it on mute at all. I didn't. I I clicked the mute and then unclicked it. It was not muted. I don't know what the hell happened there. That's weird. Well, you're back, so it doesn't matter. We're, we're good uh, now. So I can get a second, um, but no, just so I didn't lose my idea. Um, rewarding uh, people, you know, kind of how they're doing already with uh, giving them credit and everything for playing games and stuff like that. Rewarding them with giving them tours of development studios. You know, have them go around and show them, you know, show them all the cool things and everything like that. That would be really cool because it would get people invested. Like, oh, if I watch this, maybe I'll be able to go myself, and it would kind of bring more people in. And plus, you get to get to see the behind the scenes. Branching stuff. off of that, yeah, you were just, I think you were going on that tangent. Why not do documentaries? I mean, the Last of Us documentary was freaking awesome like, let's get some more stuff like that on playstation productions i i would watch that 100 yeah, percent. i'd watch every hour of that no yeah. doubt amazing. yeah for sure oh so yeah dean uh, go ahead i was gonna say stuff like the uncharted uh not the uncharted stuff like the ratchet and clank movie i think properties like that those animated things like kind of like piggybacking off of what mike was saying like jack and daxter oh yeah spyro like they have all of these mascots all these kid-friendly mascots like Put them directly on PlayStation, man. There's a lot of kids. There's a lot of younger kids playing PlayStation. Like, you put these movies on PlayStation where they can only see this on PlayStation. Like, that's you're selling games. You can potentially sell mm. action figures like that. That could take off in a whole another a whole other direction. 100%, Especially with yep. the PlayStation Gear Store now. Uh, the only way I would be okay with it though is if they didn't make it. Like, they should make it in the vein that was, like, Star Wars The Clone Wars or Star Wars Rebels, where it's cartoony, kids can still watch it and appreciate it, but at the end of the day, it still has that such an adult tone and storyline to it. Yeah, it's kind of like, like, kinda like SpongeBob. Yeah, like, SpongeBob, SpongeBob is SpongeBob. for everybody, yeah. but yeah, it's exactly. kind of for kids. But, yeah, they're, yeah. you know, if you're watching and you're an adult, you're like, oh, shit, like, I see what they're doing right <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then hopefully, eventually, if it becomes successful, we see the Netflix thing happen where they start putting more and yeah. more money into these TV mm -hmm. shows. Like, I, I right. never thought I would see something like Daredevil or, oh or yeah. Jessica, Jessica Jones, Jones on Netflix and have such a Master great budget behind it. Master of None. Like, all these oh. things are, are, are really well-written, well-produced shows. Uh, imagine if we ever got to a point where they could literally do a God of War show. Oh. Right. Right. I mean, you, yeah. have, yeah. you have uh, you have like PS View and everything like that. They're trying already to get into the yeah. TV space and everything. But the one the one final one that I had, and this I think would be the the coolest to me overall at least, is you have all these video game movies that are absolutely terrible and everything like that. And you have people feel like you in order to adapt a video game, you have to do a movie. But if they did something like you know a very short season, you know a six. You know, episode season, almost like HBO style, where you start a video game story and then tell it by the end of it. You know, and that's it. You know, that would be an amazing run. I don't know how many games would benefit from that so well. I don't have to worry about cramming everything into an hour and a half. You bull bullshit. You know, and you don't have to worry about you know continuing for next. Just do your short run. Tell the video game story that everybody would want to see. You know, Call of Duty would benefit from that really well, even in its own. There's so every single video game franchise would benefit from that, but almost every single Sony franchise would as well too i think like earlier what i was gonna say uh, before i realized my mic was muted is that right i think powers needs to just get pulled i yeah, think they, i think i know it's it is it would be worth a shot for that to make it work like andrew like you were saying because like it's a no-brainer right like you have brian michael bendis doing it it's a marvel thing kind of and it's a superhero show exclusively on your platform but now because that se that season wasn't like just bad like it was so it was bad awful that now it's like tarnished like just get mm -hmm. rid of it find something else yeah because it's gonna promote, only drag them down i mean I think promote it with something like do like why the last man or do invest in another well, property that's we already got why the last powers. man did you guys hear about that why the last man is coming to fx no what? that's crazy yeah <laughs> i'm freaking so about excited that. about it yeah why the last man so is coming random to fx but yeah like i totally agree uh, like why not 
like invest in your own like yeah. you you have yeah. all these properties dude like yeah. make some shows about that they should have done infamous if they were going to do a power uh -huh. superhero oh show God. they should have yeah, done exactly. infamous instead of yeah that's so true yeah thing. i feel like they thought powers was a bigger comic book than it actually it was. was i actually i mean and you know i mean you guys read comics and everything like that even my buddy that runs his own own comic thing he's like i had never even heard of powers i've like, never heard of powers not many people have that being said what's good about going off of source material is you don't have to write right. as much yourself you can be like well this is this is the that's outline that we can go yeah, off of like, you can't you can't dude you can't start a franchise being lazy you don't half-ass a franchise the thing that got me about the show though wasn't even the property itself like if it was the thing that gets me about that show dude is the casting mm -hmm. i just don't like any of those yep. people's faces especially like, the lead character and the lead character mm -hmm. the lead villain um even the black girl sidekick like i just i don't even remember their names they just make me so angry that's and the thing the lead hero mostly plays villains and he's like because of that he's so unlikable as the yeah. hero you're like get off the screen he's just unlikable know? period i yeah. don't right. i don't like that guy as an actor i don't like him they either, should yeah. if they could get even like a d list Ooh, actor uh, or actress and just the push them to the forefront and give them like give them powers you can give them something unknown but give somebody with a little bit of um to it like i see every natalie portman movie it's not because the story like i see it because i f trust natalie portman's gonna do a good movie same thing with actresses or actors like robert de niro like you invest in those people you don't necessarily have to invest in the film jennifer lawrence's joy didn't review very well but no. i bet you a ton of people are gonna go see that because of jennifer lawrence mm -hmm. like invest in your actors and your cast have like, you guys that. watched the second season trailer yet yeah, I don't think it looks good at okay. all. Okay, this is it here. It released a few days ago. I'm pretty sure. Um, it looks. It looks like it's going to seduce us with the same idea that it did the first season. Then we watch the first episode, maybe the second, because we're masochists and we like the pain, and we realize, wow, this is absolutely terrible. I might I'm give not, it one episode again. Just I'm not to, gonna but that's. I mean, yeah. realistically, like I don't know. It's dude. I, I agree, and I, I hated. Uh, no offense, Greg. I hated when you were saying like, "Oh, they need to do this with powers and everything like that." I completely disagree. I wanted everybody to talk about other ones just because I want powers to go away completely. We don't like. Yeah, you know, we kind of already said that's, we don't need another superhero thing. But that's the thing, though, is it's not going away. Sony's being dumb. They already confirmed it's having uh, a season two. They already released a trailer. So I would call some it being dumb. Into it. I don't. It's not dumb. It's them doubling down on something because they have to. They literally have right. to. This was their premiere TV show for PlayStation originals. They're not going to a abandon it after one season they're going to lose money on it literally i'm, I'm sure they did already yeah. and they're willing to lose more they'll probably stop it after this season unless for some miraculous reason it takes off but they're <laughs> they're right. doing they're doing this because they don't want to eat crow charlito right. uh, Charles by the way that's his name awesome. you guys Isn't don't the like guy who plays, to the, guy who plays like the villain Charlie also like... hate that guy oh my yeah, god like all either. their faces just he was on suck. uh he was the guy he was he was one of like the bad crow on game of thrones remember yes also the dad that's how Charlie I knew him from. Factory. That's his IMDB page. That's how I... Oh, he like, was the first episode. Are we talking yeah. about Eddie Izzard? Was. No, 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 no. No, not Eddie Izzard. He's like, he's the... He plays the like the second in command. Yeah, to Eddie the, like, Izzard. Weird, you know what I'm talking yeah. about oh, the British the, guy the, with the, the mustache. I watched like one and a half episodes, so I don't know. <laughs> his name is Noah Taylor. He was in Game of Thrones. He if he was like one of the betrayers of Jon Snow. Yeah, yeah, he. I hate him. Yeah, it just I, I I do agree that they're just running that show out. They're gonna give right. it one more season. It probably but, won't take off, and then they'll move on to something else. The question is, what's that gonna be? And I th hopefully right. they, have they have learned. Good, right, they have a good uh, you know service that they can bring to people. They just need to realize it, and they need to you know examine all the facets they have. Don't stop catering to the mature dark audience. Mm -hmm. Is what they really need to do too. I am excited though for Ratchet and Clank. I'm excited for Sly Cooper. Um, those are all promising. So I always right. forget about Sly Cooper. And the final mail time of the night. Once again, you guys can tweet at us with hashtag IUDP or on the spot if you want to submit questions. Dear, it only does PlayStation. If PS3 emulation came to the PS4, which games would you want to uh, like to replay or maybe even play for the first time? That also came from Mel, aka Strife Girl. Here, the tough thing about this is we've already had so many of the great PS3 games remastered, right? So you got to kind of dig with this question. What are the obscure PS3 titles that haven't already been remastered that you would like to still play on PS3? Right off the bat. I don't think this game gets enough credit at all. Critically, it did, but as far as like people talking about great games of the last generation and Slave Odyssey to the West, it was mm. very, very much on the rails um, without telling you it's on the rails. Uh, 
And yes, the gameplay wasn't fantastic, but the story that that game told and the DLC that came out for it too was so awesome. Such a great experience and such a great time that I have with that game. Um, so if PS, that would probably be the first thing I would pick up with PS3 emulation. I got nothing, man. My PS3 is right behind me, still plugged in. So anything I want to play, I just I pop it. I use my PS3 maybe like 75% as much as I use All right, well, PS4. let's adapt the question for you then, Dean. What is a game for PS3 that you just kind of regret not playing yet? What is one that you still need to get around to? Uh, the ones that I'm the ones that I'm playing right now are King, Kingdom Hearts and Kingdom Hearts 2. Are the, Woo! The big ones, yeah. Yeah, that's PS2. Ones. That's PS2, so. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm trying um See, I don't know because I bought I we talked about this a little before. Uh, I bought my PS3 like mm, the end of the middle of the PS3 lifespan. Mm -hmm. And so I bought it with those games already in mind. I was like, okay, I want to play the uncharted trilogy. I want to play God of war three. Obviously I want to play the infamous games. And so like, there's a lot that I just banged out like my first month with my PS3. Cause that's why I bought it. Mm -hmm. uh, but nothing, nothing immediately springs to mind. I think for me, it, it would have been mass effect, but I, I am finally mm. getting around to that. Um, on the PS3, like I, I'm still using my PS3. I, it would be great if it came over to PS4, and I think yeah, it probably would be smart would to be do that. Huge, um, Drew. Watching yeah, you play the I first agree. Mass Effect, I just bought Mass Effect Two and Mass Effect Three to platinum on this account again because I did it on my last account, 100. Oh yeah, how are you liking Mass, Mass Effect? By the way, uh, the thing is, I haven't played it since that first week. I'm going to try and play it again tomorrow. I, I think that's the thing is, I do want to finish Life is Strange, and I kind of wonder uh, if I just, I just want to do that first and then get to Mass Effect afterwards. I did put about three to four hours into Mass Effect, and it was good. I, I know that the first game is probably considered the worst of the bunch, but uh, oh, I like the sure. world um, right off the bat. I like the lore. I like the mythology. I like all the different species. It feels like a living, breathing world, and I feel like I'm a part of it right off the bat. I like, you the like what you like about just that first game mm -hmm. and then knowing that it's the worst, dude, uh, you, you're good. That's This yeah. is what I was worried about was you getting past that initial hit of the first game and the way that it kind of feels like clunky. But if you like yeah. that, dude, you I mean, have I'm not going to so lie. like. I'm not, I'm not like, I'm not sitting here like, oh, I'm excited to play this game again. Like, I'm kind of, <laughs> I'm kind of pushing my, forcing myself to do it. Um, That's how we all Sounds like me with Fallout 4 right now. Yeah, so yeah. I, it's not something I'm excited to go to yet. It might happen. I understand. But uh, I'm going to, I'm going to stick with it, of course. I have to. Oh, so. I wish you just, I know you couldn't because of the whole bet and whatever thing, but like, I really wish you just. No, just I think it's important though, thing. because he might not appreciate 2 and 3 as much without knowing you know what I mean? Like where it came from and like what yeah. he had already been through. Plus the story in the in the first game. I played the original important. Mass Effect after playing Mass Effect 2 and after going to the through the like the comics. Oh, did thing, you really? Because the comics thing only gave you six major decisions. So I was like, if this game is 20 plus hours long, how mm -hmm. the hell did they narrow it down to six major choices to go into Mass Effect 2? And then I, my brother had an Xbox and that's why I bought the okay, original so Mass I Effect. Play, I play them all in sequence. Oh, so you really appreciated it then? Because then I went back to Mass Effect 1 after beating Mass Effect 2, and I was like, dude, what the hell yeah, did I do myself? Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> like Drew said, I forced my, I chugged through that game. I'm like, Greg, you have to do it. You have to get through this, and I did it. Mm -hmm. uh, Mike, your your last, man. What is the one PS3 game that you would really like to finally get around to if it came to PS4? Probably Nino Kuni. Yeah. That's the only one I feel like I really missed out on that I'm like, oh, I regret not playing that. And I, that's like consistently what I regret. Um, other than that, there's not really too much. Like, Ooh. yeah, like I said, I don't really go back to many. I just thought of one, Catherine. Yes. Oh, I never really? played that. Yeah. I, I tried play playing that because it was. Uh, oh, I really liked it, and I was not into it at all. I played. I don't know if it was like one of those one-hour trials or something like that. That's but what I, I did. Yeah, the demo. I yeah. played the opening like hour or something. And I was like, this game is cool. I like this yeah! game because uh, I like Atlas in general. They're guys that do Persona, and it felt like Persona in a lot of ways. That's one I would really like to come true, to PS4 you and play. Literally came into my brain and told me. Well, something. we are brothers. This right. is true. This is very true. Brothers from another mother. All right. Yeah. Uh, so that is the end of all the topics and all of the questions. Thank you once again, Mel, for submitting. We got about 14 minutes left in this show. We're, we're pretty on time this uh, week, so that's awesome. So now we can just focus on the chat for the uh, the last part of the show. Or if you guys want, I can put up the browser. We could watch some videos. Anything you guys have in mind, uh, let's, let's you know just kind of go with uh, unscripted for the last 14 minutes here. I wish we could just sit here and as a unit... We could just watch the very last episode that came out for Star Wars Rebels because I was talking to Dean about it on Power Up, dude. <laughs> and when I tell you that 
It's just the great. I watched it four times this week, and I have brand new shows that I need to start. I need to start Bloodline. I need to start Doctor Who the last season because I have all the episodes. And, dude, <laughs> Star Wars Rebels is so fucking good. Just Greg, people, Greg, watch it. Watch Greg, it. Greg. Yes. Did you watch the midseason finale of The Flash last night? Oh, my God, Dean. Dean. Shh, no more. No more. I know. We need so much. To Greg. Happen. Greg. Greg. Yes. Yes. The leftovers. I know <laughs> that freaking finale. We need to the baby on the bridge. We need Why? to digest that thing. We need to do a reaction time at some point about that because my heart couldn't take it. I like that you're talking this close to the mic. Um, this is what we do now. Just, <laughs> this is what we do. It's just, there's so much television to ingest, but I'm telling you guys, like I know it's not. If Sony got their hands on Star Wars Rebels, oh my god. Dude, so like, wait, can I ask you then real quick, is Leftover something I'm going to enjoy if I get into it? Dude, that show, the second season, I, I like the first season, but man, everybody's talking about it because the second season is one of the biggest comeback stories ever in television. Like, yeah. it, it's just, it's a meteoric rise from that I first season. I need a new season. show to watch. I need to watch that. It is I was going to watch so uh, True Detective too, but I didn't. Uh, Don't I'm, do that. Like, Don't eh. do that to yourself. Um, I recommended it to all my friends that I play Uncharted with, my other friends on video games, not you guys. Um, and they all, my one friend just messaged me today. He said, thank you so much for turning me on to The Leftovers. And he said, holy shit, season two, every episode, better than the entire first season of Leftovers. I was like, let's See, not get I, I don't agree with that. I, I like the first I, season, I think, a lot more than some people do or something. Because that first season, I loved every episode. And I do miss the musical cues from the first season. I like season. the first season more than the second season, personally. Yeah. Um, but that's, I don't know. It's I think crazy. overall, the second season did a much better job of telling character stories and having them tie up in a really, really great way. The show, yeah, the show is all about a realistic take on how people grieve, yeah. um, and it does such a good job of so many circumstances, like so many differences in how people would grieve with this kind of event. Uh, it's just, it's so interesting to see uh, how these characters react to this. Uh, mystery you know this thing that happened to this world rapture essentially yeah. um and it's just i can't i can't recommend it i enough. recommended it to my mom was my it on aunt, hbo yeah HBO. yeah hbo go that was my question yeah i think i'm gonna watch the i like this cast i'm looking at right here oh god dude. the casting it couldn't be more perfect oh my god dude uh what's her name uh Carrie Coon. Coon, Nora. She's from Gone Girl. But, she played the sister. She's perfect. Mm -hmm. I love her. Who would have ever expected, though, Justin Thoreau, Justin Thoreau yeah. guy who wrote freaking Th mm -hmm. Tropic Thunder and mm -hmm. Zoolander, uh, like this guy to be yeah. an amazing actor. Like oh, he, this season, man, the way he he oh my I can't even explain it. The awkwardness sometimes that he has to display, the the confusion. Because that's the whole thing is what I love so much about the show is nobody knows what the fuck is going on. And that's yep. the way it's supposed to be. This is lost, but they right off the bat are like, there's no answers. Like you're not gonna get answers. We're in the same boat as all the characters in the show. And the confusion that Justin Throw is able to display in his face and it, it's just like, oh man, it's just I so think that's good. why it works so well is because the characters are so self aware in their own world and universe that they've built. Like that's why you can relate to them so yep. well because all the questions and stuff that they ask and they do, like, you're asking the same thing. So you kind of discover it together with the characters in the cast. That's why you get so mm -hmm. emotionally attached and invested to them. I think I'm going to watch this. Andrew, I will say to Andrew, any show Andrew has recommended to me so far, I have wound up loving. Mm -hmm. I trust this. I'm, I'm, I think I'm going to have to watch Great, Breaking Bad. Um, Bloodline. Bloodline is my next show. Yeah, after, Bloodline's good. I just have to finish Doctor Who season 12 because I have all the episodes finally on my DVR, so I'm getting through And that. the is last one. Is this a PlayStation podcast or is this a TV this podcast? TV this is now. free time? Okay. This, yeah. this, is, this is free time, yeah. This is how uh, we end PlayStation podcast. Fun fact for you, Justin Thoreau wrote the screenplay for Iron Man 2. Oh, that too, yeah. What? Yeah, he's a screenwriter. Weird. Yeah. Uh, he did Tropic Thunder, Zoolander, and Iron I Man 2. I knew Tropic yeah. Thunder. Um, Zoolander 2 as well. Yeah. The other one I really need to recommend because this season has been freaking unbelievable. Fargo. I need. Yeah, to you know what? That might actually be where I start. Yeah. Fargo season one. That one's not for me. Leftover seems like something I'd get behind. I, I think you will. I, you liked Lost, didn't you, Dean? Never watched Lost. Oh, you didn't watch Lost yet. I know. Oh. It's another one, Dean. Dude, I don't know. <laughs> another dude. one. It's it's a lot, Dean. I can. See, you know what the problem is though? I can see. I know exactly where Dean's gonna get pissed off and annoyed with watching it. The thing is, if we preface his watch by saying yes. dean you're not mm -hmm. going to get answers to every single little question that you want because that's, yeah. that's not the point of that and, show that's what drew did for me and i love the left yeah show. yeah that's I what I heard. I, I, I've I, heard I, people I people are pissed because like you don't you don't they don't answer the questions that like 
people thought they were what they don't answer is what exactly the island is and the origin of the island but who that's the thing is if if they actually gave an answer to that nobody i guarantee nobody would have liked the answer because there's no answer that is satisfactory for this freaking mystical island that has these properties there's no answer to that what are you going to do go back to to 4000 bc and show angels coming down from heaven and building this island like what the fuck are you going to do there's nothing you can do that is going to satisfy people just let it be the mystery and all the other questions they answer for the most part and it's about the characters anyway back to dean's point um i was just thinking about it and drew turned me on to great television series as well you started me on lost and you got me to watch friends I just realized that. Those are oh, two yeah, I completely movies. forgot that you didn't watch Friends. Like, I can't believe you missed Friends somehow, dude. That's How crazy. How did that happen? And I didn't get spoiled on any of it. That's like, wild. That's, the that's part. so weird. Like, I don't um, get, so my where should I start? Leftovers or Lost? I would start with Leftovers lost. because... I, I wouldn't start Lost yet because Lost is something that takes over your life for a while. Yeah, yeah. Lost is a time sink. I need man. to finish with depression. Walking Dead still. I'm only like middle of season five. Here's the thing about Lost. Every episode is 42 minutes and there's 120 episodes. And the moment you start it, you will binge that freaking show. Like you will not be able to stop. Every single episode ends on a cliffhanger where you're going to be like, all right, might as well watch the next one. I guarantee it. Like it, there's no stopping that show when you start. So I would say Leftovers because it's only 20 episodes. Fargo, only 20 episodes. Uh, you know, those those shorter shows might be a little bit more appropriate oh, is it for you Oh, 20 episodes per season or 10 episodes? No, 10 episodes per season two oh, seasons that's for the leftovers right. yeah, the leftovers, yeah. Oh, yeah I'm watch the, the leftovers was eight season one right or no they're eight? both 10, 10 episodes i'm pretty oh, sure awesome. all right cool yeah i'm gonna so. get on that i'm gonna get on that this and weekend so the person asking what the leftovers is about it's about the rapture essentially uh one day october 14th two percent of the entire population disappears i think that comes out to uh, how much is that total it, it's 3.2 uh million people 3.2 million yeah. people 3. um 2. yeah it's it's it sounds like not a lot when you put in percentage but it's enough that it's going to make a huge difference yeah. in in the world and it's just it's about how everybody copes with this thing and there's so many different scenarios that could happen it's like you know you could have a husband beating his wife and that person disappears so it's kind of a happy thing or you could have uh somebody whose mother died the day before the rapture and so nobody cares about that because the rapture happened the day after and, and it's about thing is, like yeah, all well, the different scenarios that could happen in this in this situation that affects all these people everyone's trying to piece together if it was like a greater purpose or not and that's what immediately everybody starts to associate it with so like there's a guy that was getting ready my one of my favorite moments and they don't really touch upon it a lot after this but they show you like little vignettes of the people that are living through it this woman's driving in her car and she's so sick and tired of her baby crying in the back seat and she's on her cell phone she's like shut up like she's getting so sick and tired of the baby her baby vanishes and they just never touch upon that story again but it's like oh my god what would you do like how do you even get oh god, because of that reason in the first season i had that was one of my theories is that all the people that disappeared are people that were wished away yeah. kind of um, because you see a lot of that pattern in the first season but I don't want to say too much more than that because it, mm-hmm. you know Guys, you'll love it you it's never so know they might actually try to answer this question they said right off the bat that they're not going to answer what happened and mm-hmm. like what caused these people to disappear but you never know if the show goes on another couple seasons mm-hmm. they might get around to it so on season two I feel like the reason why a lot of people are associating that as better is only because the the questions that they posed in episode one of season two they wrap up those questions yes. but like you said the actual event the cataclysmic thing that happens they don't wrap up that so as long as you can go into it with that mindset of like i'm not going to get answers to why it's happening but like i will get answers to like my characters and their stories yeah. then you'll be okay yeah i'm and gonna Crypt- watch it keith nice. kryptonian done i did watch friends i didn't miss it drew i did miss it but then <laughs> drew made me watch it and i'm back <laughs> miss mel says i hope justin I Bieber vanished. That. and that's what's funny is th- they do have in like the background on the televisions and stuff you might hear that jay leno disappeared or shaquille yeah. o'neal like there are celebrities Brand obviously you know if you have two percent of the population you're definitely going to have some huge celebrities that disappeared and you you hear about that a lot for instance the pope disappeared on yeah. the show and that was a big deal because it's like whoa why did the pope disappear like you know so it, it, there's a lot to that show and it's it's really really interesting uh i can't star wars <laughs> rebels is the other one i, need to I don't know where to go from this now with this conversation it's like how do we mm. how do we close this show we just went to tv talk for for 15 minutes i don't know tv talk usually takes up a big part of power up too not gonna lie <laughs> I love yeah, talking that's about TV. A, that's focused on something related to the theme of our show. Oh, my God. I love television. I love talking about it. Guys, please do me a favor. I know The Leftovers is a great show, but please, I was explaining it to Dean, especially if you're excited for fucking the new Star Wars movie. All of Star Wars, Clone Wars, and Rebels is canon. It's included oh, with all of the movies. So, oh, include, like the, including the prequels? Including the prequels. So one, two, oh, I didn't three. know that. Oh, that kind of yeah. just... 
disturbs me a little bit. I forgot about that. Yeah. Well, Clone Wars is more associated with that, but Rebels takes place in between three and four and kind of tells you how Darth Vader becomes fucking crazy and like menacing. And it's such a good story. And my favorite Jedi of all time is established in these two animated series, Ahsoka Tano. She's the shit. And last episode, it would be and dude. Whatever actually, that means. Apparently, I'm going to uh, Star Wars twice on Friday. I'm going to the first showing of the day, and apparently now I'm going yeah. to the last showing of the day. I'm still I'll Tuesday be, of the next week, so... <laughs> I'll be oh, seeing man. it with Dino. My first experience will be Monday. I'm so I'm, excited. I'm going the night it opens at 7, and then, again, Monday with uh, I'm so worried. I'm so freaking worried that I'm going to get spoiled. I'm a little worried for oh, you. Oh, dude, you're going to get spoiled. I can't... I, I, it sucks. Like, I, are you not able? Like, you weren't able to get any tickets at all? For I could have, but I'm not going to put myself in bad seats. Yeah, retweet. Uh, I don't, but I didn't get bad seats, dude. I had really good seats. You yeah. must have went to one that didn't have reserved seating, or no reserved seats. See, yeah. I don't know where you went then, because eight eight a.m. on the morning that it, the tickets <laughs> went on sale, I was online looking, and we're going to uh, friggin' United Artists. Yeah, I was just gonna say, Dean, can you get two more tickets for Dean, uh, for Drew and Kristen? Are you not home at this point, Monday probably. morning? No, not at this oh, point. Oh, right no. there. That idea, yeah, not so. Well, I might be off that week. Actually, I'm not sure. I might be taking off that week. But uh, let me wrap up the show here with all right. our, our <laughs> spiel. Um, we did our personal lives. We got 35 uh, people in the room. We haven't had any follows tonight so far. So please, if you are new to our channel, 35 of you here, uh, hit that follow button or heart button, as Greg is displaying right now in the bottom of, of corner of your screen. Your name will oh. pop up, and we'll of course shout you out. We're also on Twitter at the Level Up Network, level spelled LVL. Tweet at us with hashtag on the spot to be a featured question on Sunday shows or with hashtag IODP if you want to be a featured question on It Only Does PlayStation. Uh, we've got our Facebook. You can like us there, of course, and build that community. Or you can go to Patreon if you want to best support our network. You can donate just $1 per month uh, and get a few per perks in return. Perks that we will be revising soon, by the way. Uh, we're going to try and uh, do a little bit of a revamp of our Patreon, try and bring it back into the spotlight. Uh, otherwise, we have the levelupnetwork.com slash donate if you want to just do a singular donation you don't have to you know do a monthly thing youtube.com slash to level up show level spelled lvl if you want to check out archived episodes of everything that we do uh subscribe while you're there because dean and greg down here they do uh, a youtube exclusive show it's called power up it's all about superhero comic book nerdiness that's on every saturday typically da, 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 da. Yes. He likes that. He likes doing that. I love that so much. <laughs> and last but not least, we do have a t-shirt shop. It's the levelupshow.spreadshirt.com. We will have a new t-shirt for this uh, coming Sunday, actually. Uh, we need to get around to that. I just remember. Oh, yeah. By the way, Greg. Gay electrician. Yes. What? Is it your turn for the t-shirt or no? That's why gay electrician. I feel like with my face, I feel like this should be. No, is it weird that, that at the beginning for like the first 15 seconds, you kept saying gay, like ele gay electrician. I thought you were talking about a, a, an Irish Trishan. I was like the gay electrician. I was like, what's a Trishan? It, why is it Gaelic? And I'm confused right now. <laughs> Uh, so that was my, oh, my that's where my mind went. Uh, and I think that's going to wrap up the show for us tonight. Thank you to everybody that watched. This was a great episode. We did a, this was, this flowed very well tonight. Boom, oh. boom, boom. You make my heart go boom, boom. All of you three nice men. Okay, that's enough. I got to go to bed. Yep. Uh, so uh, in it only does PlayStation fashion, we end with PlayStation spirit fingers. If I Do I need to explain this again? It's three, two, one. And then we do the spirit fingers, but we say PlayStation. Can we do that? I, I messed up last time, but I'm ready now. Okay. What are we doing now? Three, two, one. And then after the one, jazz we hands. do PlayStation with the spirit jazz fingers. Hands. Yeah, the jazz hands. Okay. All right. So three, two, one. PlayStation. PlayStation. Why is Drew gyrating? Oh. Uh -huh.